think about where we are in this race at the moment, as you said, Neil, there's just under 100 laps. Sorry, it's only 98 laps, just under 100 laps remaining. And when you think about that gap where it's stagnated between a lead driver and David Reynolds with Richie Stanaway, it's currently 17.8. It's been around that the whole time. Jacobson has made great ground, and that's a tremendous performance by him in car 56 to be third. And there's Matt Campbell again. So we've assembled a, a little bit of a list of those that have been having a battle down here. So to begin with, car number 97, Matt Campbell down there. And uh, this is a little package of those moments. Another one down at turn one for 97. So they've been having terrible trouble trying to get this thing pulled up on occasion today. And he's still in the car at the moment. There it is again down at turn 23. He's currently in 15th. hasn't just been today. Had some problems early in the week with all three of their cars, and there is Shane Van Gisbergen. He's not very happy. <clears throat> he drove well early, but he's not very happy with how this has unfolded today. Have a look at this great shot we've got of the coverage, the entry, mid-corner, and exit of the tyre power cutting. It's raining more heavily again up there now. And I just said a second ago about the leader of about to put car 97 and triple eight back a lap and that's about to take place in fact just in behind these cars is that group so stanaway is catching matt campbell and that is going to put car 97 they're right at skyline together they're probably only 200 meters behind this group of 33 and 17 and this is on board now with the leader. So on, on current estimate, with a long way to go, Pro Driver in with a shot here in this race with three in the top 10. Car number 88 is well and truly a live prospect with Wind Cup and Dumbrell, and so is car number nine, Reynolds and Luke Gilden. Both of the Walkinshaw cars, cars two and 22 are in the top 10, and they're in certainly with a shot. Richard Musket, James Moffat, together with Dale Wood, Chris Pippa and Garth Tander just at the back end of the top 10 for Prema and for McLaughlin. They're just outside the 10 and 11th at the moment. And their focus is now going to shift towards survival and points. 11th at the moment with a long way to go, though. That's 144 points. And they've got to start thinking about everything that it takes to get home and just bank something out of this less than ideal day, for sure. Crompo, I've just wandered into Nissan Motorsport and we've got a great special guest in the garage here today. As you both know, there was a change of at the top of the management structure of Nissan Australia prior to Sandown. Brand new boss, Stephen Lester, welcome. How are you fighting the mountain? What do you think? Absolutely. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here in, uh, in Bathurst. Obviously a world-class uh, facility here and uh, just excited to be part of the racing action here. The Kelly brothers run a very good operation here. It's a massive undertaking, but they run a very good ship, don't they? Absolutely. The activations are completely impressive that uh, Nissan is carrying out over the course of the weekend and uh, it's been uh, challenging weather-wise today but uh, the fan enthusiasm is completely impressive. Really excited that you're here for your Bathurst debut but motorsport's not necessarily a new thing for you though is it? No absolutely not. I've been fortunate in my career to have lots of access to uh, various motorsport events as well as F1 programs around the world so really excited to be here. It's fantastic to have you. Welcome. Enjoy the great race. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Cheers. There's a critical moment in the background. Thanks for the update Rusty. Because Richie Stanaway has now cleared Matt Campbell, car number 97, putting him a lap down. So that box is in that car, makes it much harder. As I say, there's different sequences unfolding in fuel loads and where drivers are at at the moment. It's a little bit early to start to get too carried away about what it all means. Look at that up on the top left hand corner of your screen, lap 66 of 161. You're going to have to drive, there's two drivers out there this afternoon with incredible mental application. Nothing like the physicality of what it's like in the drive, but at the end of this day, the drivers will be completely wiped out from the concentration required to drive around on eggshells for the whole afternoon. That, that 100%, it's more fatiguing sometimes, these sorts of races, because you're on the verge of crashing pretty much every corner. So you've got hold of the wheel tight, you're trying to minimize those inputs and trying to keep the thing off the fence. 
And you can just see Matty Campbell sliding everywhere. That car is a very difficult, twitchy car to drive. We've seen him off the road a lot so far. He's been able to do it in a couple of the zones that haven't been too problematic. But up here, if you have a big moment, like there, if you get that white line on the exit of Reed Park before McPhillamy, you feed yourself in the right-hand wall very quickly. So as you said, Neil, these races are mentally draining and the fatigue factor often plays a part in minimising those mistakes as Richie Stenaway just makes the corner and you can just tell almost every time that we're about to have a little pit stop here and Richard Musket is now in as well in car number 34 so the race leader in Cam Water's about to leap in so they've got to manage out comes the cool suit. And guys, uh, you probably be able to tell me I didn't check before I came out into the lane because I expected they were going to do a tyre change. They have no tyres on standby here, so they're leaving the ones that are on the car. They've got the temperature in them. Uh, you've probably got it on the street since last time Richie Sanaway was on how many they've done. But they've chosen just to do fuel and do this driver change. They will measure those pads again. So the mechanics take the front wheels off. They've got the rulers in their mouths. They're measuring the wear on those front pads. They've left it alone. They've got that information. Richie Stanaway walks into the garage after another epic stint. Yeah, so he's only done 44 laps, I think. Is that right? That's his total. I just want to see where they were on that, last, on that last set of tyres since their last change gave him. Yeah. yeah, so Murphy, he's only done 44. So he's 10 laps down. So he'll have to get back in, which is no drama, really, given how good he's gone. Hasn't he driven well? How many Kiwis are you? What, what's happening with you guys over in the pond area there with your production of... We can't tell you, Scafie. Huh? It's a secret. We would then give it away, mate. We've got to keep this, these things to ourselves. Sorry. OK, bro. Yeah. OK, bro. No, you can't do it. <laughs> okay. You can't do Sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> Here he is. He's out of the car. Tremendous job. Good job. Chris O'Toole coming over to congratulate him. And there's one of the bros. Leave him alone. Richie, uh, climbed out of the car. 44 laps, I think, we've, you've done. How tricky and hard is it? You seem to be managing it pretty well, though. Yeah, it's, you know, really difficult conditions out there, but the car seems to be working pretty well. You know, whenever it's wet, you'll either be fast or not, and, you know, it's just a matter of settling into the room and see what we had, and had good pace, and um, it's quite hard when you're trying to go for such a long time in these conditions, you know. It's a lot easier when you're trying to qualify in these conditions because you can kind of hang it out, you know, for one lap or two. But to try and keep the rhythm going for such a long time is really difficult. So, yeah, it's tough. You decided to leave the tyres on. Obviously, you're giving the team some information on how the car's performing. Got some temperature on those ones. So, uh, Cam gets to go out on a, on a warmer, warmer set of tyres. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to, to speak to them about that yet. But... When I went out after my stop, the greens were actually okay, which I wasn't expecting. So there were there or thereabouts on, on the outlap, which, yeah, I was, I was expecting them to be really slippery, but it was all right. So, um, yeah, but it still takes a few laps for them to come in. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a long day in these conditions. Good work. Well done, mate. Thank you. So by my reckoning, he only did 18 laps in that last stint, which he's done away. And as you said, Mark, he's still got another stint to apply. But I don't think it's a problem for them. They've got total flexibility across both drivers. They're both doing similar lap speed. If anything, uh, Richie could well be the star of the field in these conditions at the moment. Remembering also that Cam Waters and Richie were the winners at Santa. They've already banked 300 points at the Pertec Enduro Cup as they stand by at Red Bull. Cameron's ninth in the championship. They could be staring at another 300 points today on the evidence of the run they're having so far. Shane's getting ready to come in to car number 97. Matty Campbell will leap out. There's the detail on the back of the pit board that you hear them reciting on the radio. This is important that this stop gets them back out in front of Stanaway to stay on the lead lap because that lap, remember, evolved just before these stops. They were put back a lap before. So when Waters comes by, where will Van Giersbergen be? This is critical. So this will be interesting to see where Van Giersbergen lands. Gone by, uh, he's gone. He's gone. So this is big time for them. They're they're in plenty of trouble now. Yeah, they're a lap down. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, 
leaders miles up the road. So right now, car number nine is almost at uh, McPhillamy. Car number 97 is only just departed the lane. Halfway up Mountain Straight, car number 20. In in process, Jack LeBrock, Todd Kelly. Luckman's Express Camp Cat The View. And a bit of a pump there because Pink Gisbergen, four fresh tyres, the leader on the warmer tyres that we just heard from Richie Stanaway and that uh, is a bit of a punt there for Shane. Matty Campbell now gesturing and that's driver language speak with Grant McPherson as to what sort of dramas he was experiencing and car balance and all, all kinds because he's uh, all, all things, yeah. Very difficult stint. Unfortunately, he's been down the road many times at turn 23, the last corner. Total fuel range in that stint. That's what we saw before with Stanaway. So this is just prior to David coming in. We caught the back end of this shot. And I wondered what was going on there, but now I understand because it was uh, a pit stop coming up. So he's uncoupled the driver cool suit there from the dry ice box that was on the left. We only saw the last little bit of it. I thought, what's he fishing around fiddling with? Geez, we've seen some great images from this rearward camera between Reed Park and McFellamy Park. In the dry, that little section of road is about 195 kilometres an hour. In the rain, it'll be about 30 to 40 k slower, but it's so slippery and there's a white line there that you have to be so careful of. This is the zone that I was talking about right now. As soon as you're in the dip, this is the bit that we're seeing, the great images of the big slide and the great car control, Murph. Yeah, guys, just want to show you the tyres that just came off the 97 just now. This is the right front right here. You can see the edges are still in very, very good shape. There's, most of them are actually still pretty sharp, but look here. This is the outside edge of the right front. It has not touched the ground. The mould uh, little knobs there are still there, and you can still feel the slipperiness of that release compound. You've talked about a lot, Scofi. This has not been on the road at all, and that's a bit of a camber issue. Obviously, lots to camber. I'm watching those cars leave the lane with all the camber on. The tyre is just not being able to be thrust into the road, as we talked about. So they've still got those dry settings in. Too much camber. That's probably a bit of an issue, you would say, with the 97 right now. Some, the fact that they've got the dry settings on the car, the camber is too much, and they can't get the rubber down on the road to, you know, prep the car up. Meantime, David Reynolds has the helmet off, and I've just wanted into Erebus to have a quick word. How was the stint? And they look like they were brand new wets that went on for Luke Yildon. Um, I don't think they were roaded. No, did they? Did you change him? He did. Yeah, he did change him. There you go. <laughs> they told me before he wasn't, so I wasn't really sure. But um, yeah, mate, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I was just a bit slow out there. I was struggling to find a bit of grip and a bit of pace. And yeah, got some traffic and stuff, but otherwise, mate, we're still we're still in the hunt. It's going okay. Scafi and Crompo have just observed that you guys are just playing in your own you know, your own beat more or less, aren't you? Yeah, exactly, mate. We're just doing what we can with with, with the car we got and the pace we've got. Uh, the pro drive cars are very fast and the wet, very slick. Um, yeah, we're just trying to do the best job we can. Keep trucking, thank you. All right, thanks, brother. On that topic of the pro drive racing Australia cars, Cam Waters and Gary Jacobson are now one and two. And whatever they've got settings-wise in both of those cars, they may have chosen to make them slightly wetter cars for this race. I, I get the suspicion that that may be the case because I, I'm not seeing the same pace out of cars 5 or 55. Clearly only a guess. But they've got fantastic pace at the moment and up first and second, so that's a big story. David Reynolds and Luke Hilton are, are certainly well and truly in the game. They're currently in third position. It's only half a second between first and second. It's a, a very good battle there at the moment with team cars. Cam Waters on board, Gary Jacobson in behind, and you can see. So we're on board with Jacobson, and he's right up in behind Cam Waters. Now, Cam Waters will just be getting his rhythm back and trying to understand the grip level and saw the big slide that he had right here a couple of laps ago. Mostert actually is going fast. He was the fastest car on the previous lap. So Chaz, who was very impressive, that was a bit of a moment there for Jacobson. You don't need to be in the throttle too hard there to escape sideways and easily make contact with the fence. So there's the numbers, there's the times. They're all reasonably close on that lap. One, two, three, and four. 
But as you can see, the amount of all rear locking just there, as you can see, the amount of correction and delicacy required to get the car turned in and a big slide there. It's a little river of water that runs across the road, just at that little kink at the start of Conrod. And it's easy at that point to burst into wheel spin and spin around. Right on the edge here at the moment, Gary Jacobs. And some of these images are frightening me a little bit. So he's driving it right up to and slightly over the edge. But he clearly got lots of confidence in the car, so he feels he can get away with it at the moment. He's pushing very hard. It's exactly half a second. This is the battle for the lead of the race. They're both from Pro Drive Racing Australia, but very different colours. Monster Energy, Ford Falcon, the leader of Cam Waters, Gary Jacobson in the Mega Fuels entry, sharing it with Jason Bright. He's quick out there at the moment. Right on him. And now on the last lap, uh, Cam Waters was the 11th fastest car. Gary Jacobson was the 5th fastest car. And the fastest man out there, Shane Van Gisbergen. He's down in 20th position. Now it's hard when you're this close to the back of the preceding car so much water plume behind the leader it's very difficult to see exactly where you want to break some of the references are purely coming from the high intensity rain light and from the brake lights of the preceding car cutting second gear just gentle with the throttle and it slides up to the right looking to try and grab third here shortly oh he's got traffic there goes gizzy so this is important, he's on the unlap mission. Shane Van Gisbergen, who was the fastest the last lap, is working very hard in these conditions to get that lap back. And he has just split the leaders. And he's driving alternate lines out there. So he's just rounded up Gary Jacobson. And he's gonna have a crack over the top of the hill at the leader, Cam Waters. That's a brave move. So Van Gisbergen, with fresh tyres, freshly in the car, climbing back and trying to get that lap back. He split the leaders. Jacobson was threatening to pass Cam Waters. Now Van Gisbergen is threatening to clean them all up, looking again for alternate lines up at Forest Elbow. He'll get a better exit here. He's got much better drive. Van Gisbergen's going to blow by here. So he's not a factor, but he's now 6,200 metres behind the race leaders. If we get a safety car, and he's showing this kind of pace, Van Gisbergen's well and truly back in the game. So now we go back to the focus battle between first and second. Jacobson wants to profit from this. He's right on the leader's tail, looks down the inside. Is there any grip to be able to pull it up? Cleanly done. Again, Van Gisbergen looking for something different line-wise, trying to find some grip. So this is a lively little exchange with 91 laps remaining. We've done three hours and nine minutes of racing. We've got Pro Drive Racing Australia cars one and two, and now a rookie, Gary Jacobson, is leading this race in the Mega Fuels entry car number 56, displacing Cam Waters, who doesn't look quite as comfortable right at the moment. So last time through, Waters was the 19th fastest car, and it was actually James Courtney that was quick on the last lap. Mark Scott just made a quick pit stop. You came back at a good time. That was great. Because... Uh, Van Gisbergen has got all that time back that he lost. That's a very good bit of driving, isn't it? We were thinking at that stage that he was gone. And that was very close with Jacobson and Cam Waters as the rookie. Can you believe it? First time. And you can see that Van Gisbergen only just out of the road. You were probably giving him a little compliment about trying to find a new line. I think his new line was not necessarily <laughs> deliberate. He found that line as a consequence of battling to stop. But he is now on a totally different line in the braking area for the final corner. And let's have a look at his speed because you can see the gap there that he's got over the others. But have a look at the gap over Cam Waters. They've both got a massive gap now over Cam. The advantage that Gary's got in particular is that he's been out there soaking in it. Yep. For Cam, it's a new experience. Having said that, Van Gisberg has only just climbed in his car, but maybe they've done something settings-wise, changed the incoming tyre pressures that Shane's hooked up at the moment. But 
It's a big, long, tall order to now get all the way back around that circuit and get back in touch with the leaders who are also in this same shot. Absolutely. Jacobs. Now, I asked them about the settings on these cars and where they were at. The 55 that has actually got the probably the least amount of camber on out of all of them. And if you look at the lap times for Chaz Moss at the moment, he is by far the fastest car out there. But I think ProDrive have done a good job of maybe reducing some of the numbers when it comes to the camera, and they've got a very, very fast package at the moment. The last lap order for um, Moss, that he was the second quickest. The fastest car was Van Gisbergen. But I've been keeping an eye on Mozzie. He's currently in ninth place. He's on the lead lap. He's a minute and 40 seconds away from the lead. So he's got a lot of work to do. Car number 22, James Courtney in as well from sixth position. That was a wild manoeuvre on Warren Luff up the top of the hill. James is staying in the car. No, he's not. He's jumping out. So Jack Perkins back in, I beg your pardon. So we'll just keep an eye on the progress of Mostert. Okay, we'll get out. There he is on screen on the left. As they come into the lane, car number 33, Garth Tander, together with Lee Holdsworth, who's had a good stint. This car's fast at the moment. It's trading faster slaps with Shane Van Gisbergen. Uh, so the last lap for him was 237.6. It's a minute 42 from the lead. And I'm just looking for where car 55 sat in the order. Last lap order was seventh fastest for him. But again, it was still Van Gisbergen that was the quickest on the last lap. Gary Jacobson, you just walked in the, into the garage with a rock star reception and to quote your Super 2 car, nice, Gary. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is great to get the respect from the team, but um, look, I'm still fully focused. i got one more stint to do, so it's been great. You know, first, you know, my first ever Bathurst debut has gone off to a pretty cool start, but um, yeah, like... It's, it's such a long day and I just can't help but not let myself get too ahead of myself. I just want to keep focused and finish the job. So a little bit of a, um, you know, disappointing sand down result for me. So I was really, uh, you know, keen to do a better job to repay Mega and ProDrive for selecting me as a co-driver. But, um, yeah, good start. Just how difficult was it out there and um, oh. pretty nice dice towards the end of that stint as well with your teammate? Yeah, super difficult, you know. Like, I, every pass I did, I wanted to make sure I was 100% right, and I don't know if it was Richie or Cam in there, but we got a lot of mutual respect for, for each other as teammates, so didn't want to do the move until I stuck at it um, properly, so um, really intense, though. Like, every single corner, this place can bite you in the dry, and in the wet, it is so much harder again. So I think some of the Speedway experience in the off-season in the sprint car with GW Racing has really paid dividends, actually. <laughs> I think you're going about it absolutely the right way. Congratulations at the moment. Ta, thanks. When you get your leg fixed, we're we'll going to go for a pedal. <laughs> OK, thanks, Gary. <laughs> yeah, well done, Gary. That's been an excellent drive for him this afternoon. Still a lot of work to come. As he said, keeping the lid on it. So a little moment down here on the replay at the end of turn one for Cam Waters. The wide line got it pulled up managed to scramble around, maybe lost a tiny little bit of time, half a second to a second in the process. He had some onboards there before. Here's the shot looking over Cam's shoulder. And Jason Bright as well, who had a lot of wheel spin with that new tyre set on his car. So he's the leader of the race with a 25-second gap now. And one of the things when you're looking at the lap times across the field, Van Gisbergen on the last lap was two and a half to three seconds faster than them all. He did a 34-6 on the last lap. Everyone else is doing 37s and 38s. So he has made a considerable amount of ground. And now, Steve Richards is also trying to unravel that lap. That's the critical part for him, because prior, he was a full lap down, so he'd be doing the same thing, trying to unlap himself. Just wondering what they may have changed for Shane, or is it just something as simple as pressures? And we've got car number five down the escape road here, Dean Cando, turn 23. Last one. I think that car's been down there before earlier today, mind you. Can pretty not much put them all. Not Nostradamus. I'm trying to remember that one. Yeah, exactly. I didn't predict that one. Um, yeah, it has been down there before, so it's the second time, I think, for that car, according to my notes. And so I'm just wondering what they may have done to 97 to smart it up, or are the conditions just suiting that car's settings more at the moment? I think it's a combination of a bit of a tweak to the car, but a bit of a tweak to 
Van Gisberg, and we know how good he is in the rain, so is Mostert. But we know he's very good in the rain, and he's putting a huge amount of effort into driving that car very hard at the moment. He want to make up the ground that was lost. They've struggled with their performance today. Matty Campbell had a very difficult assignment for the young 22-year-old and one of the most treacherous days that we've seen at Mount Panorama. There's a bit of weirdness going on up ahead here in front of car number eight at the moment. Nick Perkatz at the helm. There's something in the way of a battle occurring just in front. It's trying to work out who is or even one of them is car triple eight. And that's got Stephen Richards in it at the moment. And I think the other one is might be car number six actually. So another incident up the end of the pit straight, this time for car number 88 for Paul Dumbrell from third. I reckon what Murph said before uh, could be quite realistic. If they've got a, a, still about a, a fair amount of dry camber setting on this car and uh, they haven't got much contact with the road, that may be affecting the braking performance, but it's very strange to see, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it is a triple eight and six, so they were well and truly out of turn two before. So Lowndes and Richards are a lap down in this process at the moment. They just unlap themselves now, so that was the issue before. Ah, right. Yeah, that's why he was so vigorous trying to get back by, because he needed to do exactly what Ben Gisbergen did earlier on. Ben Gisbergen just reported that the tyres were very good. As I said on the previous lap there, he was doing 36s. We'll give you some indicative numbers in terms of his lap speed. Cam Waters is having a much bigger struggle at the moment with this car than Richie Stanaway was earlier. And remember, they did change tyres on this car, so it's hard for Cam to come in at this phase of the race not really knowing the indicative track grip nor the tyre quality. There you go, there's some numbers. So 36.5 for Van Gisbergen. Mostert on the, that was actually Mostert with the fastest lap on that one. But prior, Van Gisbergen's been the, the fast man. Dumbrell, Luff, they're all roughly in the 36s and the 37s. Cam Waters compromised on that lap with a 40. Just followed up on the 97 question. And uh, the issue, believe it or not, is just tyre pressure. So tiny, tiny amounts of tyre pressure variation are having major impact on the stopwatch. So uh, by varying the incoming tyre pressure for the tyre set that Van Gisbergen's got at the moment, it's died. it's died. So it's all over for car 17. The engine I'm sounds like it's expired. It. What a tragedy for these guys. On the run up towards the cutting, car number 17 has stopped. Hey, hey, hey. This could trigger hey, hey. the hey, Vodafone hey. safety hey, hey. car. Hey, hey. It's, it's expired. So, whatever the issue earlier in the day, safety we wondered whether or not flag, it would safety survive. Car and flag, safety car stand by. Just got a car stopped outside turn four. What a heartbreak for Alex Premer and for Scotty McLaughlin after such an extraordinary day yesterday. Such incredible speed. It went off song a long time ago. They tried another engine map. They had a good look around the headers. They had a look, good look around the electronics of the car. And now it's ground to a halt. It sounded awful when it went past the commentary box window just a couple of laps ago. No surprise. And you know, Cam Waters has been back in that car struggling with pace. They've got a brand new set of tyres for him. He stayed, sorry, the tyres that were on the car after Richie Stanaway stood. I think you said they'd done 19 laps there, Crompo. They just didn't work by the looks of it. I asked Richie what was going on. He said, listen, it just must be the tyre. We chose the wrong option, so they've changed them. They're refueling it. He'll be on his way again. Be interesting to know whether they've made a little pressure variation to Murph if, you, if they're willing to give the information away because we heard from Red Bull that tiny increments are making big differences. That's car number nine in and out. Been vying for the lead of the race. Battling here with car number 88. Paul Dumbrell and Luke Gilden in those cars at the moment. Did they change drivers just then, or did they leave Luke in? They have left Luke in. So what this has done for Van Giersberg and has brought him right back into the picture. As I said before, that even though he was a lap behind, the pace that he's showing, if the field compresses, he'll be a real threat. So will Mostert. 
That's right. So once he got by, once he made the pass on car six on Cam Waters, once he made that pass and he pressed on, he's currently 12th. And that's going to put him in the queue and on the lead lap. So we've just got to organise ourselves now as to what that's done from a strategic standpoint, the way that this is going to unfold. And as you said, have a look at the amount of camber on that car there. You can see why the front of those cars would be difficult to uh, make the car pull up under brakes and get the car turned. Half the tyre is off the ground. Rusty? The legend Dick Johnson just having a word a moment ago with Scotty McLaughlin, someone who knows well about the highs and lows of this game. How do you feel? That's a tough one. Yeah, it's pretty hard, but, you know, we're... We were um... We we're battling anyway. Uh, it's, you know, we we're struggling there. But uh, to all our fans, our sponsors, Shelby Power, it's, it's tough. But you know, we've still got one car there left, and uh, cheer on Fabs to the end. You've got the headsets off, so I'm not sure if you know the answer. But Scafie and Crompo have been worried about oil at that part of the track. Has it fully let go? Is that what's happened? Uh, I'm not sure. I just said that you lost oil pressure. Um, there was no smoke or anything. But yeah, could have just dropped something. But. Uh... Yeah, until we get it back or whatever. I'm not, I think we're pretty done, so, yeah, unfortunately. Heartbreak for this guy. Record-breaking lap yesterday, and full credit to him. You've just gone around and seen every member of the team. Hard luck. No, thanks, Jess. And the final Pro Drive car has made it to the lane. Uh, Dean Kenzo and Mark Winterbottom just putting fuel in. All other three Pro Drive cars have been in. The six, as we saw, obviously put tyres on. The other three just getting fuel in there at the moment. Cam Waters is our race leader. He has been picked up by the Vodafone safety car. It's our first safety car, believe it or not, of the day. We've got 85 laps remaining. Order is Cam Waters, Ford Falcon, Luke Yulden, Holden Commodore, and then a string of Commodores, Yulden, Dumbrell, Luff, and Perkins. And then Bright's back in 56 now after that stunning stint from Gary Jacobson. Chas Mostert is up in seventh. Van Gisbergen is eighth. Golding is ninth. Coulthard is tenth. Congestion down here in the lane. What's going on with 18? Can't get it restarted. Parked awkwardly there at 45, having to take it back into position. So watch out for seven and eight as in positions in this race now, Mark. Mostert and Van Gisbergen on the end of the train as they try and refire the Preston Hire car. Remember, they had electrical trouble, trouble a couple of laps into the race last year and had to retire. What's going on here? I'm still struggling to fire it, are they? Flat battery. Jump jump battery is what yeah. it's called for, yeah. so they can uh, couple up an external battery, which typically would be at the front of the garage, not the back. Yes. And one of the issues about wet days is you've got more things running than they normally have running. So the amount of amps required to run everything still got cool suits and all the normal stuff but you got the wipers running got the rain light on power cycle do we want to try power cycle switch everything off and switch everything on so they're just trying to determine what electrical issue is unfolding here it sounded like straight away that it was a lack of voltage which power cycle switch off switch it off switch it off they need to take the they're asking for the master to go off but there's some conjecture in the crew there lucky it's a safety car this would have put them a lap behind it sounds more like it might no nah, it's still not going to light up now if they bring it into the garage they can have more people work on it they don't uh the moment they compromise when they're half stranded in the lane so they need to bring it into the garage and they've uh, just dropped a lap in that process now so that's a shame because lee's actually done a very good stint he just he soldiered on and he's talked earlier in the week about that car not being particularly nice to drive but they've done a very nice job today both of them carl reinler as well that's the scene as the safety car grabs the field heading up mountain straight unfortunately for Preston Hire racing after the stop the car stalled and they weren't able to restart they brought the jump battery out thinking it may have required an extra bit of power to get it started by bringing it into the garage more people can work on it so I see the laptop there they'll try and diagnose what the issue is keep you updated with what's happening there for both Carl Reimer and Lee Holdsworth Jeff Gregg supervising is Lee Holdsworth the primary driver in that car he's done a ripping job today his face that less than thrilled about what's happening so waters yulden 
Dumbrell, Luff, Perkins, Bright, Mostert, Van Gisbergen, Golding and Coulthard. So big spread of teams still well and truly involved in this one. It's a seesaw battle involving Pro Drive Racing Australia, Erebus, Triple Eight Race Engineering and Walkinshaw Racing. They've all got good operators at the sharp end of town. And now the field's compressed. So that makes it a mouth-watering prospect that we see a charge from Mostert and... Now, lights out, lights out, accelerate away from the field. They've earned an opportunity to be at or near the front of this thing. But unfortunately, they've got some problems right now. So this is going to energise things, but safety cars tend to breed safety cars. The, the whole field is now compressed. Focus very carefully on 7th and 8th in the queue. Mostert and Van Gisbergen have been lightning fast in this stint. Cam Waters has changed tyres. He's been having a bit of a battle. Luke Gilden's in car number nine. So it's a mix of primary and co-drivers. So primary driver Waters, co-driver Yulden, Dumbrell, Luff and Perkins. Primary driver Bright, primary driver Mostert and Van Gisbergen. Co-driver Golding, primary driver Coulthard. That's the top ten. The safety car lights are out. We will get a restart this time round. They're under the control of Cam Waters, who does this regularly as a part of the championship season. He's involved in these safety car restarts. It's harder for the co-drivers because they're not as exposed to the problem sometimes of maintaining the gap, not overlapping early or passing before the control line. We are racing once more. 83 laps remain in the great race 2017 edition. Hope you're enjoying our coverage. We've got a lot of excitement and racing to come this afternoon. Waters, Yulden, Dumbrell. Keep an eye out on the super cheap car in the background and watch closely for that Red Bull Holden as well. What it's done is basically double the amount of cars on the lead lap now. So right through to 24th, they're on the lead lap. So that safety car benefited a lot of those guys to get their lap back. Second thing it's done is the cars that were able to stay on the warm tyre will be better off. If you've stopped in that session, meaning the safety car period, the tyres are cold. There's Van Gisbergen and Mostert. They're battling. Have a look at their run. Have a look at Mostert straight away. Down the inside. Will he get there for the kick? He yes, he does. Jack Perkins, I think that may be. Shot from the tyre power cutting. Perkins in car number 22 in the boost mobile hold. Van Gisbergen lost a little bit of ground there. Mostert is now very close to the back of car number 56. Jason Bright's in that car at the moment. And it's wet up there. Some have got tyres that have got some residual warmth. Others have got stone cold tyres and virtually zero visibility. The camera tells a fib when you're in the car, you cannot see a thing. Most have passed between Reed Park and McPhillamy Park. You never get down the inside there. Great job, Mostert on Bright. On board with Chaz. That's very bold. Up it now to fifth. He's in behind Warren Luff. They might be teammates, but there wasn't much teammate action going on there. It's a great shot from the inside of the dipper. So Mostert will now try to set up this next pass, which is Warren Luff, and Van, he does. Van Gisbergen's having a sniff down the inside, and I think he's got Perkins down at the elbow at turn 18. He didn't quite get it done. I think the gap diminished there. So he thought about it. They're going to be battling here in the mist if you're more than a couple of cars back. Blue flags for car number 21 that's in the mix here as well. 21's got Tim Blanchard at the helm. That's the new BJR car. The leader is Waters. Fresh air's making a difference for him. Whew. He was across the kerb. He just fired across the kerb on the inside. That was unbelievable. He tried to move out of the way for visibility to try to get out of the spray. When he got there, he had to go across the kerb at the chase. It's because he can't see and trying to manage who's behind you. If you looked in the rear view mirror of one of these cars at the moment, all you're going to see is a brownish greyish mess. It's water everywhere. Mostert. Look at this battle. Side by side, Dumbrell and Mostert, they're going to be added on the run towards turn one. Waters is the leader from Luke Gilden, Paul Dumbrell and Chaz Mostert. Then we've got Warren Luff, Jason Bright, Shane Van Gisbergen. This is going to be a wonderful battle. Mostert came off turn one very strongly. Does he have an extra little bit of puff as a result of the good corner exit speed? Look at the plume of water behind those cars. 21 still mixed up in here as well. There's the leader. Waters, there's Yulden. Up the inside now comes Boston. No! Remember that 21 is out of sequence. 
but there's a blue flag warning for that car. Is the pass on now? Yes. Yes is the answer to the question. And down the inside and... Uh, have a look at this. He goes straight across that curb. That is unbelievable. And he made it stick. He got control of the car. On board now. Check this out. So he gets out from the slipstream. He's got no road. Across the curb, gathers it up and stops it. And, and he grabbed a bit of throttle again on the other side of it. That's a, wow. That's car confidence. Here's the replay of the pass. That inside line out of turn two is a rocket. When you square off the rears and sit the car flat, get the throttle percentage up, rather than having to creep down the camber of the road on the outside there is making a big difference, isn't it? So that's a good move by Chaz Mostert. Now, Van Gisbergen's cleared bright. Look how difficult it is to see out of that car. Yeah, it's not good, is it? I mean, forget, oh. about, forget about the grip on the racetrack. Actually seeing out of car number 88 to mission. Steve Owen, he's the co-driver of car number 55. Currently in third and charging. Most it like we thought. He's been showing great pace. Cam's race control still talking about car number 21. So on board now with Mostert. Now, when you're a little bit behind other cars, the visibility is really bad. The only time it gets better, there's a yellow flag. There's a yellow flag there. Blue flag for the car 21 notification. So for a lap behind, a lap down, here's the indication. You wouldn't be able to see that flag <laughs> down there. There's just no chance in the world. So, so now the bad sportsmanship flag comes out for car 21. So that's gone up a, up a level. And Mostert is charging. He's made a huge amount of ground on Luke Gilden. So Gilden is slightly out of phase with Dumbrell as co-drivers in this part of the race. And now Mostert up into P2 on the last lap time of a 2 minute 39.1. So that is one and a half seconds faster than Cam Waters. A couple of seconds faster than Luke Gilden, and the evidence is on screen as he moves up into second position. So on those numbers, Mostert is going to crush that gap that you can see at the moment very quickly. We spoke about the heartbreak that this team has endured, and I just want to get a quick word with Jeff Gretsch. Jeff, uh, we saw the car was, was propped in pit lane because there was a bit of a block during that, uh, that safety car, so just talk us through what's happened here. Yeah, it looks like it's um, done a sync sensor, and then it's, um, it's obviously internally in the engine, and it's, yeah... It's um, smashed the sink since they've got the oil and it's all over Red Rover. The heartbreak for this team has uh, had over the last couple of years really doesn't get any easier. No, nah, it doesn't, but, you know, I mean, that's this, that's this place, this game. You're in, you just got to, uh, dare I say it, suck it up and try and press on. We look forward to seeing you at the Gold Coast. Thanks, Jeff. OK, thank you. So you feel for Jeff there. Meantime, up on... Our computer timing, a pit lane drive through penalty car 21 for failing to obey those blue flags. So that's been costly. Whether there was a radio issue or visibility or both, but the net effect of that is that we're going to have to trundle car 21 through the pit lane, Tim Blanchard. So in the end, head office has intervened and said, if you won't move out of the way, we'll move you. So that's now a pit lane drive through penalty. So if he wasn't seeing that flag before or hearing the radio message, chances are the same may apply here. Well, that's what it is. So this is this is the reason. So they'll be all complaining about the location of 21 and not adhering to the message. So right now, and he doesn't know where he is on the road. So that's the problem. He's actually reporting in. He's trying to wipe. You can see he's trying to wipe the inside of the of the windscreen. David Couch said, "Yes, mate, we understand. We had a little shot before." of another, that's being Gisbergen now, but we had a little shot before of the guys at Red Bull preparing another one of those sticks for them to get to the windscreen because Dumbrell can't see anything. There, there you go. There's another one of these. So there's been a thousand theories over the years of how you actually minimise the inside fogging. There's 21 in for the pit lane drive-through. So it went from blue flags, it went to bad sportsmanship flags, and now it's been escalated to a pit lane drive through. Now this is it, this is what I was saying. This is going on down the straight. This is almost 300 kilometers an hour. 
and he's trying to clear the screen. You can see he's still in fifth gear, actually, so he hasn't gone up. to the correction involved there for Dumbrell to try and gather that thing up under brakes. And who's fired off there? It's Warren Luff has gone into the beach. Can he get out? Is he out the other side? Yep. Yes. Luff has survived that one. Luckily, he had velocity to get out the other side and gathers it back up and gets on. That drops him all the way back down to 11th, 12th. Meantime, the Red Bull guys are in arm wrestling combat here at the moment. Van Gisbergen and Dumbrell have just traded positions. So Van Gisbergen had great pace early, but I think they're both struggling to be able to see at the moment. And I, I'm not sure that the pace of Van Gisbergen oh, is quite Take what it was earlier. Uh, There's a lot different. going on out there at the moment. Chaz Mostert is our race leader over Cam Waters. It's Ford 1-2. So now there's blue flags being shown to car number 20 as well. Todd Kelly's in that car at the moment. So that was costly for car 21 before missing the queue to get out of the way. But I think there's that much going on trying to manage what's in your peripheral vision. They're going to have something to do there. something here. They're going to have to do something with this car. He can't see. He doesn't know where he is. So in the end, you'll end up firing in the fence. Now, remembering this is all about the championship because one car stopped. And James Moffat has just gone by. That's fourth position, by the way, position six. So that's dreadful visibility. He's got no chance of seeing out the left side of that windscreen and predominantly left corners around here. So there's a little bit of visibility in the straight ahead position. But that's uh, next to impossible for him to be able to sight an apex. So you talk about the number of left turns. There's only 14 of them on this racetrack. <laughs> of the 23. Of the 23. <laughs> But the big game in town, I know this is the grand final race, but when you think about the 84 points, the leader's already gone out. The leader of the championship is out of the race. So he's dumped the 300 point day. If you fire in the fence now, you don't make any gain. So one of the big things that the Red Bull guys have got to get their brain around is how they improve the visibility of this car. There's only, you play a high stakes game if you continue to run without being able to see around here. It's hard enough with, it, with perfect visibility. And who are you racing? There You're you racing go. Fabian Coulthard. Look at that. That's about as low tech as it gets. You're racing Fabian Coulthard. He's currently in 13th. He's third in the championship. So there's a little bit of cushion in the points and there's also a cushion on the racetrack. Pit stops are costly and that's the reason why they want to minimise those. A moment down at the bottom of the chase in the left-hander there. To Hahn and David Reynolds. You say yesterday to us, I stood up at the mountain goat. Yeah, stay focused, Dave. <laughs> He's a maniac. <laughs> he did a great job yesterday. I think in almost any other circumstances that would have generated Shot the Bathurst screens. pole. 4.4 seconds is the gap between Mostert and Waters. 8.7 seconds covers the top three. It's a misty scene over the top of Mount Panorama. 2,850 feet above sea level. And we're almost in the base of the cloud here at the moment. Jamie Wincup. He's getting ready to get on board. Paul Dumbrell's currently in sixth. They're deeply compromised with visibility out of the Red Bull Holden Racing Team car number 88. And provisionally... Wincup goes back into the championship lead based on where that car sits in the field at the moment. But Mark Scape's point is if it ends up, ends up in the wall, then uh, you neutralise the big gain that you've just been given by Shell V-Power Racing. So they have to consider what to do with that screen. I don't know that they've got too many options. So this is a very difficult scenario for Paul Dumbrell. These conditions with perfect visibility are treacherous. When you can't see, it is unbelievably dangerous. And when we've taken the onboard shot now on regular occasion with Paul Dumbrell, he's got a stick with some material on the end trying to clear the inside fog on the screen this is now the battle for third position as Luke Yildon tries to fend off 
Shane Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen on the high, wide go-kart line. Gets the beautiful runoff. And this will put him in the right zone to outbreak Luke further down the straight when you get to the chase. Roland Dane said to me recently, he was talking about the theory of what you use to clear the fog on the screens. And there's all sorts of theories, you know, white potato skins and detergent and Coke. all sorts of things. So he was only discussing that with me a week or so back as now Van Gisbergen makes the move down the inside of Luke Gilder. So, yes, Shane does have pace, but he needs to be able to uncork it and he needs to be able to see. But I don't think he's got quite the same problems as they have in car number 88. This is the view now from Luke Gilder's car. And Luke... On the traditional line, Shane's been using this inside line in the braking area down there, knowing there's a puddle and a lot of cars that have gone off down the escape road at the final corner, at Murray's corner. So as I said, you have a look at these conditions. It's glassy at best. There's standing water on the road. There's rivers of water in certain areas. There's Dave Reynolds over the shoulder of Alistair McVeigh continued to look on and track the progress of Luke Yildon. This is on board now. You can hear the wheel spin. Check that wheel spin out, right? That's about 225 kilometres an hour, 230k in fifth gear on Mountain Straight. You could spin the car in its own length when it wheel spins there. Remember, the cars haven't got a diff. They've got a spool differential. So both rear wheels do the same speed. So as soon as you've lost rear adhesion, both wheels do the same thing. On board now, this is Jack Perkins. One of the things that's not helping the cause at the moment is there's just no breeze out there to move any of the water away. Replay of Jack on the outside at Forest Elbow. Oh. A little bit of contact there. Just wipes the left front corner of the Holden on the back end of the Valvoline car. The, the, uh, Wilson security car so that was an awkward moment for him you know I just had a look a moment ago we've only had just under four millimeters of rain the problem is we're just hanging in it we're just sitting in this cloud here at the moment so it's not a huge amount of water but it doesn't look like that on the racetrack does it it's good for the farmers excellent and it's not looking good it's, uh, out the windscreen of 88 we'll just uh, quickly grab see if I can get Dotto for one second he's just on the radio at the moment uh, doing some chat but uh, they've got another squeegee over there to hand to, to whoever's getting in uh, 88 next. The 97 is not too much better, but looking at some of those other windscreens, how clear a lot of the other guys are, they've clearly got a bit of a unique issue going on in the two cars. He's still talking here, guys, so I might just uh, leave him to it for now, and I'll get some information and pass it back to you. Yeah, I think, Murph, the, the stick that we saw being prepared was another one of the squeegee-style arrangements that we're seeing Paul Dubrell use. But you can't drive down the straight. You saw it before. It was bursting into wheel spin. He was trying to get from fifth gear to sixth gear. And you've got the stick in one hand and the driving duties being conducted with his left hand. It was just very precarious. And clearly, when your visibility is bad, as off goes car 12. And that's a big one. It's the third time, isn't it? Uh, third in the championship. So that's the... But he's been off the road a couple of times down yeah. here. You, you've been tracking the offs, <laughs> which we were using the gate post method. Where, where are you? How many have you got? Uh, yeah, he's been he's been down the escape road at 23, down at the last corner before. Yeah. So I'll just add Chase, C H A S D. Good work. That one out. <laughs> so he is, as you said, third in the championship. Currently, 161 points adrift of Scott McLaughlin. Remember. Now remember, oh, oh big yeah. understeer. Massive understeer. Car 97. Now there's so many people reporting on completely fogged up. That was actually that was Will Davison, I think. Is Will yeah, Davison on board now? Yeah, it was Will that uh, yeah. said that. You can't see at all. Remember, it wasn't that long ago that he was effectively a lap behind so they've done a good job with the safety car now what about Moffat's run so far what a great job on our predictor at the moment we've got Mostert, Waters, Yielded, Moffat and Dumbrell Dumbrell's clearly in trouble based on his visibility but Moffat has come up he's come up 18 positions from the start and 
terms of speed, Mostert was fastest again on the last lap. So I just looked at when the fuel window closes for Van Gisbergen when you raised that point there, Mark. And uh, on numbers that we've got here, it's got to be in by lap 96 or he's out of fuel. So that's still 10 away. Let's go to Rusty. I just wanted into Techno Autosports and had a word to uh, to Adrian Burgess just in relation to Will Davison and what he's been saying on the radio about visibility. He is not running, even though they share a garage with uh, with Craig Lowndes' crew next door and so on. They are not running one of those squeaky systems. So Will is just having to grin and bear it at the moment. But visibility is an issue for him right now. I think it's becoming a big talking point for everybody. And that's Adrian Burgess with his back to us there. Also in the garage at Techno Autosports. And uh, one of the things that I just want to point out, that remark I made about the fuel window closing, that doesn't mean that's when Van Gisbergen comes in. They can choose to bring him any time earlier, and we're hearing that he may be in earlier than that, and that'll be to do with where they're at with their driver, Max and Mins, and the maximum driving times as well. We're on board here with James Moffat, car number 34. Wow, it's slippery. This is the run to the final corner. He's flying at the moment, Moffat. He was second here a few years ago with Taz Douglas. That was a nice, clean move. Got the move done on Luke Yulden very nicely and sails off now in fourth position. Is the replay from the other side of the equation. Riding with Luke. Gives him plenty of space down there. You see the mudguard of the Holden slide down the inside. A little bit of contact with the passenger side mirror. Matt Campbell now back on standby. He's only got five laps to go to, to reach his minimum. So this is a difficult situation, isn't it? Because you turn know he lane, struggled. So Grant McPherson said, turn your wiper off. They're coming in right now. So turn your wiper off when you get to pit lane. This is for voltage as the engine speed is low. You want to minimise the amount of amperage that you're overall using, and they want to be able to do the tear off at the same time. So this needs to be with a wiper stationary. Murph? Yeah, boys. Uh, just spoke to Grant McPherson. Clearly, obviously, the cars are all sealed up. I think the car might be too sealed up. There's no airflow going through there. There's moisture everywhere. There could be water in the car. That's why they do try and keep the boots and everything dry on the driver, and it's condensating, obviously, with the temperature that's still being generated through the floor into the car. The I've got rags here to try and wipe up some of the moisture that's on the screen and they have some different anti-fog that they're going to try and get on there but you know as well as I do that takes a fair bit of preparation to make sure that stuff works so as much moisture being wiped out from the inside of that screen as possible and then they've got some wipes there with that anti-fog they've got a squeegee on the end of a stick that they are that they put inside that car they've taken the one out that Shane Van Gisbergen had on his way there was no tire change just fuel for Matt Campbell. Hey, hey, Murph, while you were talking, there's a kangaroo on Mountain Straight and the safety car's been called. So there you go. We've just got a shot of it right now. So Skippy's made his annual appearance. And what's it done? Did he... So a very big lead by Mostert now evaporates 12 seconds. Exactly. I was just trying to contemplate what that what that really does. Well, Chaz is at Forest Elbow. Here's the Vodafone safety car. He's at Forest Elbow. Cam Waters is coming down the hill off the S's. Here he is. And the rest of them are in varying ways over the top of the hill. And number 97 is uh, heading out of the cutting. He's last in the queue. So this is Cam Waters. That gives you an idea of the margin. And uh, all that will disappear now. So. 12 seconds, the cushion that's been earned with that great pace of Chas Mostert in that car now disappears back to zero. Second intervention of the Vodafone safety car. First one was when car number 17 expired on the run up towards the cutting. They've been suffering that engine problem for the majority of the day. And the second one, the scary prospect of the kangaroo on the circuit, which they need to manage. Now, this is the important look at story. The, um, those who've cleared their stops and those who haven't so... Uh, 54 is the minimum. James Golding's done 55. Jack Perkins done 52. Uh, there's a whole bunch of drivers that are on the cusp of doing it. But, uh, David Wall's done 52. So we'll uh, keep you up to speed with who's where. These guys are using the opportunity to come back in. And uh, remember, they've got to clear the seven minimum stop. 
requirement as well. That's one of the other factors that's got to be taken into account. So driver change now, Steve Owen gets in. Race leader's car. Waters is in, Moffat's in, Yield is in. So four leaders are all in. This is going to give Garth Tander a chance to drive right to the end. So we're forecasting a finish of roughly 6.15 with the current pace, and given how long the safety car is out, who knows, but in accordance with the regulations, now that Golding's completed his laps, Garth should be able to finish the last three hours of this. Yeah, because no more than three and a half hours of continuous driving at the moment. Right. It's currently 3.15 local time. Projected race conclusion is 6.15. Small risk there, though. Yeah, there is. If you've got, I mean, we have had some pretty crazy safety car interventions over a period of time. But you have to burn up a fair bit more time before that became an issue. So everybody's reacted to this opportunity with the safety car. Perkins has assumed the lead now in car number 22 from Andre Heimgartner in car number 14. So different people playing the, their cards in different ways here. I left the circuit last night about 9.30 in the dark and uh, Skippy made a surprise appearance left to right, literally over the bonnet of the car. Really? Yeah. And uh, that got my attention. And, uh, and did you use those legendary racing skills to avoid? Yeah, well, here I am. <laughs> Boys, just a little uh, theory on my part, looking at what's going on down here in the pit lane. Some driver changes. Steve Owen jumped back in uh, the 55 to obviously get his minimum done. Cam Waters came in. He stayed in the car. He's done 44, I think. You're probably able to have that information in front of you. I think he's going to get his minimum done, and I reckon Richie Stanaway is going to be the one to finish in the six to the end of this race. I think you're right. That's exactly the number, Greg. 44 is the number at this point. So, uh, as you said, there's a couple right on the cusp. Dumbrell's done 53. Russell, 52. Uh, where are we? Yeah, Golding for sure. So that's a good one for Garth, as we've already pointed out. So, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of conjecture over here. So we're going to turn the, the Cam Waters, Richie Stanaway scenario over. And Richie's going to be the primary driver. So right at the back of the... Well, I contemplate it. Now is the time to join Sky TV for just £20 a month. Enjoy the most talked about shows exclusively on Sky Atlantic. And don't miss out with 45 channels of catch-up TV. Plus, add totally unlimited broadband for just £18 a month for 12 months, including line rental. So get Sky TV for £20 a month and add totally unlimited broadband for £18 a month. Search Sky Bundles to join or recontract. Sky. Believe in better. Winter can hit you hard if your boiler's not up to it. With home care from less than 40p a day, we'll service your boiler every year. And a big slide, Steve. That was a replay of him almost going in the fence at the cutting. That was a massive moment for Steve Richards. He was the 24th fastest car on the last lap. Though that's not normal for Stephen Richards, so that thing mustn't be too secure beneath him at the moment. Golding right in behind. I'm just trying to see where he was getting that run because it was right in behind. There you go. He was so close at the kink at the top of the straight on Paul Dumbrell. Everyone battling to stop. We've seen Dumbrell and the visibility issues from on board that he's experiencing. I'm surprised by the lack of safety cars today in we haven't seen too many wet races here that's been wet for the whole day. In fact, I can't remember a complete day of rain. Do you think the John Goss, Kevin Bartlett race in 74 was wet all day? I can't remember. Oh, I think it was dry at the start from memory, from my foggy memory of the videotapes of that race. But You drove in that, didn't you? I did not. Oh, sorry. 
Now, back to the serious business of the car race. The majority of the co-drivers now go and have some, just get some chocolate into you or something. And, um, and looking at who's done what, if there was a safety car now, pretty much at the point where we could get the primary drivers in the car, there's a couple of anomalies, but most of them can get home as a primary driver in terms of dealing with that now. Change here with Richo out and Craig Lowndes okay, wriggling in. All the are done. And yep. of can you the, get in and try and, yeah. Can you get in and try and do that? Of the primary drivers please? that can do it now, just on all those maximum Perfect minimums, guys. Tim Slade's in and he can go to the end. Not in terms of stops, he's still got to keep on putting fuel in the car and okay, tyres and whatever you meet the seven requirement, seven stop requirement, but Slade can do it from here. Uh, he's down in 18th position. And now Lowndes, uh, same deal as you just witnessed with him climbing in. Uh, incidentally, uh, I think 19 is in front of six and therefore if we had a safety car, he can get his lap back now as well for Will Davis because I was talking about that just a little bit earlier. Car 20, Todd Kelly's getting a blue flag shown to him again. Uh, looking at 97 on screen here, Matt Campbell. He's tucked in behind Richard Musket. These guys are fifth and sixth. Nick Perkat looks pretty quick here at the moment he in does. seventh position, doesn't he? So he's actually even moving it offline confidently. Able to, uh, to run it out there in the water. That's Andrew Edwards, the senior engineer at Brad Jones Racing. I think that uh, big Macaulay Jones with his back to us. So Perkat up one spot in that move that we just saw, car number eight. We're on board with him now. He's got a crazy success record at this place. He won with Garth Pander in 2011. He was third last year. He's had a couple of third placings. And he's pushing on very hard at the moment. Uh, we'll get another read on him. On the last lap, he was the third fastest car. So he's about to complete another, and we'll see where he sits in the order. Through the control line now. Four third fastest, obviously, cars still coming across the line. Fastest car on the last lap was Cam Waters. The second fastest car was actually Will Davison as he scrambles to get his lap back. He's cleared the leader. He's on the same lap now, but he's all but a full lap behind. So he needs to try and get a safety car break or press on pace wise to undo that problem. And you might find that Jason Wright and Gary Jacobson do a similar thing with Cam Waters and Richie Stanaway in converting the lead driver to primary driver. Gary Jacobson drove very well earlier in the race in the rain. And in terms of minimums, remember they've got to do a third of the race, the 54 laps. So Stanaway will probably be the lead driver in terms of time. Is that car hit something or did that happen earlier? I didn't see that damage on the front of Jack Perkins' car earlier on. And the same thing will probably apply for Jason Bright. Now, Musket, how many laps has he got to do to get out? He has done 49, so he's got another five laps before he can get clear and put Moffat back in. And this is the one. So this is actually what you were talking about, and that's the leader. And Davison has got to press on. Now, it looks like Cam Waters is going to get this job done and put him back to being a lap behind. Yeah, so the, in fact, he's, Wilbur's just given him an indicator to let him know which way to do it. He had the left indicator on. So he won't want to give that away, but um, he may not have any choice here in that process. And he'll be screaming. Cam Waters will be saying over the radio about well, Will getting out of the way. Well, Will's got blue flags now, so it's actually in order. It's not, it's not a request. It's got to actually clear him. Yep, he's so done it. He's done it. He's respected those flags. He would have got the information on the radio from Cam a little. So that puts him a lap back down again. Who's pity? Andre Heimgarter at the, out of the car and into the garage. It was a very late call up for you to join this team with Freightliner Racing. I think from our calculations, your laps are completed and good job is done for, for the day. Yeah, it's, um, I didn't even get to sit in the car before um, I think it was Thursday and I only had about 10, 15 laps before today's race. So went into you know, wild conditions and just had to do what we could do. But um, that's great point out there.
there finally at that last sit there. I was getting a, bit, a little bit more comfortable. We're pushing a little bit harder, but great to hand the car back in one piece. You were a little bit compromised in terms of seating position, so how was the body pulling up? Yeah, it was a bit sore, especially after the first double sit. My uh, left foot was pretty sore. sore. I can hardly walk the carriage, yeah, but, but it's it's yeah, sorted it out and, and um, yeah, got back in. But yeah, loving it and uh, it was great fun. Nice job. Enjoy the rest of the race. Cheers. Thank you. During this current stint on Ocrompo and Scape, you've been debating whether Monster Energy Racing might flip things and let Richie Stanaway uh, finish the, the race for that car. Well, I can tell you, Scape, you've question marked it. They are also giving serious contemplation to the same thing at Pro Drive with Gary Jacobson, the reigning Dunlop Super 2 champion, and Jason Bright. Now, Jacobson is getting kitted up now. He's got his balaclava on, but uh, when I asked him straight up, could you finish this race? He's a rookie. It's his Bathurst debut. He said to me, yep, it's a possibility and smiled. Not confirmation, but he gave me a nice smile. Yeah, yeah. so that's an interesting one, isn't it? Uh, also, while that was happening, I saw Jack Perkins have a moment there because when he leapt out of the car, he was actually snagged in the belt for a moment and he had to re-release the seatbelt buckle because he was actually stuck in it. Right. So As like, it, did, he, it didn't release he properly. He didn't release it properly, only no. released half the belt, so he had to hit it again because he was actually trapped in the car for the moment. It just cost him a couple of seconds. It does a nice little spring run thing oh. around the back of the car, doesn't it? So watch this. So they've got it well marked so that from a visibility standpoint, the drivers can look down and see what's going on with the belt. But watch what happens. So he opens it, but see how it didn't fully release? So he's actually had to hit it a second time to be able to get out. Ouch. And then jo uh, James is able to just jump back in and Mostert's getting ready now for his next stint. And one of the reasons why that happened to Jack is you want to unlock and then return to centre that belt knuckle, because otherwise if it remains in the unlocked position, and they've got like a, a detent, is a spring-loaded mechanism on them, and it stays open, you feed the belts in, but of course they don't latch. Stay there. So you want the thing to actually return to centre so that you can actually get the belts to drop into place. So a couple of little seconds went awry there, but they got away with it. They were covered by the fuel. 14 seconds is the margin. Cam Waters over Luke Yield at the moment. We're just about completed lap 100. It's usually a pretty significant marker in the race. It gives you a bit of an understanding of what's to come. It's Jonathan Webb standing by with Will Davison now arriving at Techno Autosports. They share a boom and a crew. That is, Late Race Engineering and the Team Vortex crew of Lowndes and Richards are sharing that boom. There it is. Looking for fuel to come back up that vent line that's assuming that they're filling to the brim sometimes it's a time stop there was extra time there it was so uh, co drive the light on please john co drive the light on so uh, what was going on there there was a little bit of extra work needed to be done the spike operator was just working away on the left side and uh Required the spike operator to then clear the car and drop it. Uh, car number 15 has just walked on by car number 88, and that's for position. So David Wall has actually gone a ninth ahead of Paul Dumbrell there. So Paul must be continuing to battle to see where he's going. This is going to be just about trying to gather some points this afternoon. If this is the case with 88 and they just can't cure its ills visibility wise, because where they're sitting at the moment in 10th position is worth 156 points. Pretty valuable. Yeah, so your, your point about Dumbrell and this visibility issue is very important. It doesn't look too bad. So it, it makes it look right now, doesn't it? Maybe it, the car's ordinary, isn't it? No? That, that's probably sounding more like the culprit because <laughs> that's, that's not too bad for uh, wet, wet, weather visibility at the moment, isn't it? have a bit of a look here and we'll get we'll, by eavesdropping we'll be able to see what Paul is dealing with we were talking 22 to 24 laps in a dry stint we've been looking at 26 and 27 laps in wet stints so we'll recalculate uh, that critical lap which will be the lap where you can fuel up and get home to the end of this race I'll let you know what that is and that's going to be
key because we're now starting to get towards that phase where we talk about the chess game to this point is about staying in touch, buying a ticket to the main game at the back end, the last three stints of the race, three or four stints of the race. You want to be somewhere in the top half dozen cars. Maybe you could afford to be in the 10. If you're out of the 10, it becomes a much harder task. And this is a great move down the inside by Nick Perkat. So we reckon that the new number for that, based on the current numbers that we're seeing, is probably about lap 134, yeah. fueled to the end. But as always, it'll be a nail-biter, and it's going to depend on the level of wet. I mean, good luck trying to figure out that. I mean, if anything, at the moment, it's the first time we've actually seen something that looks like a groove for a long, long time. Garth Pander was, was right. Exactly. So just uh, reiterating that point, using the recalculated consumption and range that we're thinking about at the moment, we're out the window based on what we talked about in the Hino Hub this morning, but two stops, three sticks to get us home from here. Lap 107 and lap 134. Now, if you get to lap 134, you can get it gassed up and potentially get home. Here's the replay of Big Perkett. Uh, down the left-hand side of car number 55, and that is for position number three over Steve Owen. And that is on the basis from lap 134 that stayed something like it is at the moment. But the curiosity for me, and oh, this is a little moment here because he's just gone out on cold, greasy tyres, Shane Van Gisberg, and he's down in 17th, and that's awkward. It's the replay on board now. Didn't get it stopped down here. It wriggled when it came out of the tram tracks. There's just that tiny little bit of evidence mark in a couple of spots where there's actually a groove appearing. It's a long way from, a long, long way from dry, but it's best described as in places less wet. <laughs> it's a very good way of explaining it. In fact, for Cam Water, he's, he's actually done his fastest second sector at the moment. So, no, I just finished that sentence. About two seconds later, I was told that it's now raining again in pit lane. Oh, scrub all that. Right. <laughs> but your point about the 134... Fast through that bit, folks. That's right. But your point about 134 is very much dependent upon what you said before about how wet it is. If you're currently talking about the condition that we've watched for most of the day, then 134 would be fine. I'm sure you get home. No drama from there. The problem is, if it's a little bit drier, and as I said, Cam Waters, he's actually showing his personal best to that second sector. So he's actually, in some ways, now starting to look for a bit of water on those tyres, getting out of the tracks, especially up pit straight there. He's moving it over and ensuring that those tyres stay cool. So that's an interesting change all of a sudden in the complexion of the race. We'll have a bit of a look at the margins here for you. There he goes hunting the water that Mark was talking about. It's 19 seconds between Cam Waters and Luke Gilden. You're going to have to wait an eternity for Lukey to appear here in the Penrite car. Here he is out of turn one. Nick Perkat is flying at the moment in position number three. He's in the Brad Jones Racing Boost mobile car. Then it's Steve Owen for Super Cheap Auto. Hasn't looked as comfortable in the wet today, has he? And then... Out of sequence is actually Todd Kelly in car number 20. So behind Owen, it's Musket, then Bright, then Golding, then Wall. There's car 20. Todd's in that car. 34 is Musket. 56 is Bright. 33 is Golding. 15 is Wall. Paul Dumbrell is in position number 9 in car number 88. Then we've got Warren Luff here in 02, followed by Dean Canto been a little quieter in these conditions in that car today, haven't they? Their 11th. Then David Russell in 78 is 12th. Then a gap back to Dean Fiore here in car number 23. This is the Nissan pick for Holiday Parks on that car. New livery this weekend. 14th. Chris Pither is driving Dale Woods car number 99. The Advam entry. GB galvanising for Erebus. And then we've got a bit of a gap back to Tim Slade. He's 16th. Freightliner Racing. And then the next in the queue will be Shane Van Gisberg and Shane's in 17. He had a little tour of the paddock at the chase just a few moments ago. And Gizzy's got 1 minute and 21 seconds to find if he wants to be near the sharp end of this battle. Next, James Courtney, 18th. Followed then by Craig Lowndes. Alex Rullo was out of sequence there. And indeed, so is Jonathan Webb, slightly out of sequence. 
that gives you a bit of an idea of where the majority of your favorite cars and drivers are, are in the field. 59 laps remaining. We've been racing for four hours and 39 minutes, and our projected finish time is New South Wales summertime 6.16. Critical lap. Well, we've moved that from, we think, about 1.37, 1.39 this morning in the drive. We've moved it back. We think in these sorts of conditions, if you fill up, you'll probably get her home from lap 134. Entirely weather and track condition dependent. Boys, I just wanted to uh, bring up that uh, the combination of Waters and Stanaway and how they've been able to manipulate their strategy all day because, as we referenced before, and Brad Wisterson gave me a bit of a rise for the smile, uh, Sanaway's obviously going to be in this car to the finish, but Cam Ward is producing such incredible speed. He's pulled out that, I think it's, what is it, 25, 26 seconds now on Steve Owen. Chaz Mossett's getting ready to get back in that car, but having those two drivers where you can just switch and do whatever you want because the speed that they both produce gives you that advantage as having its day here at the moment again, like it did at Sandown for the Monster Energy number six. Yeah, for sure. Look, there's no doubt about that, and that's actually a really big part of having the flexibility to be able to do that and convert lead driver to co-driver in the way that that's rolled out through the course of today. The guy that's doing a really good job at the moment is Nick Perkat. Have a look at those gaps. He's closed this to Luke Yildon. Now, we know that we're comparing the co-driver with the lead driver, but Nick Perkat's been very fast. On the last lap, he was the fastest car, and he's doing a really good job. So in real terms, He's actually 20 seconds from Cam Waters, who leads this race. So Waters, Yildon, Percat, Owen, Musket, who's pretty much done his laps now, and Bright remembering that he's probably going to transfer that lead driver role with Jacobson as the closing stages unfold. Low cloud base over the top of the hill there. It's uh, the weather's been totally weird today. In fact, at one stage when it got down to about 5,000 metres of visibility, I got a warning up on uh, my phone. One of the other interesting things about the point that Greg made a moment ago about Cam and Richie, well, you and I had a private conversation about this. We love to talk about motorsport morning, noon and night, about over the years the place has tended to favour those with a big pile of experience. Neither of those drivers have got it here. So yeah. if you look at Cam Waters, he made his debut, it's his debut location in 2011 when he won that Shannon showdown, Cam Waters. And for Richie Stanaway, he's only been here once before. He did it last year with Chris Pither, and he finished in 12th. So there's a total lack of mileage there. But when you look at the credentials of both of them, for Cam, he was the Dunlop Super 2 champion, and he was an Australian Formula 4 champion, so huge pedigree. Did all the right things in the ladder system to get here. And on the other side of the column, you look at Richie Stanaway, and it's a stunning string of success. And those guys are well on target at the moment to be able to put together another 300 points in the Pertec Enduro Cup. And he's going to rocket up the standings on this basis. Cam's ninth in the championship. It's a long, long way to go, but they're in a mighty position right now. And as Greg pointed out, they've got total flexibility. It's basically a double-A combination in lap speed. Now, the next critical point's coming up as well, so we're just looking at some of our computer tracking in here strategically and they need to get to about lap 106 to be able to get these cars in that window that we described before so these next couple of laps are critical I think it's probably better to try to clear Luke Yordan and get out of harm's way Luke runs a little bit wide at the left-hander of the chase. And he'll probably try to do the crisscross on the way out of the final corner here. So I'm just looking at the, this little battle here, at the same time, one eye on the radar on my phone. I'm, I'm not convinced that in the short term, we don't actually end up with a drier track. And despite the talk about it getting heavier in the latter part of the afternoon, maybe that first wave of weather has gone through now. So um, it's been drawn to my attention in the box that we may, we may have seen the worst of it. That, that, and that'll be the real curveball here because that'll throw some of these numbers that they've all worked to out the window. That'll be a stretch which might force another stop. 100%. That'll make things totally weird. Totally weird, like a non-weird day we've had so far. <laughs> like something really out of the ordinary happens at Bathurst. <laughs> So Nick Perkat's going very quickly there at the moment. 
The Boost Mobile car now up into second and continues his brilliant run at Mount Panorama, the servicing car number 15, the single led Nissan. David Wall and Rick Kelly sharing this car. Driver change and snuffed it. Got it back out once more. Now Cam Waters, just further to my point about the track condition, has just done the best split we've seen in the first sector, or his personal best, I should say. So that's very quick, nearly as quick as the best all day. 22 and a half seconds is the margin. Cam Waters over Nick Perkat. Actually getting a bit foggy up the top of the mountain, but the track's improving temporarily. We're beginning to see people doing a better job of their lap speed. So these are the radar traces that are being seen inside the garages. Many of the teams, they're watching very carefully. And I don't know where they've got that position. I'm looking at the same one on my phone at the moment. I've got a feeling that the worst of what we've been dealing with today may well have now moved through to the east towards the Blue Mountains. So that's inside the ProDrive Racing Australia garage. Let's have a look here at uh, car number eight, Nick Perkat, looking very speedy, makes a move here on Luke Gilden, sneaks up the inside, grabs him for second spot, sits up on that high crest in the middle of the road between the painted white lines and zaps on by. That's position number two. So he's got a 23 second buffer out to Waters. So if the track improves, It'll make the way in which the sequencing of these stops unfolds tricky. We might end up with the prospect of having to do a little splash and dash in this one to get home. Well, it hurts your number, doesn't it? So, yeah. under normal circumstances, we've been talking 137 as the critical lap. We thought it was going to move back to 134, given the wet conditions and less fuel usage. But if it does dry up, then the calculations to get to that will be compromised. Now, the fastest two cars on the racetrack on the last lap mark were Cam Waters and Nick Perkat, and they are first and second in that order. That's the way you want it. You want those guys that have got the form at the sharp end. Van Gisbergen, who's down in 13th, was the third fastest. But for Shane, he's still a minute and 20 seconds behind. James Golding in the background has passed Richard Musket for position. And he was fourth fastest on the last lap. So he's jumped up a spot into fifth. And here it is. And he's done it up at turn two, and he's done it very nicely. He's driving very well. He's running one of the co-driver sessions was outstanding. And he snuck on out the other side, and now sitting up there in fifth position. As you would expect, guys, uh, the clever people down doing the engineering roles and the strategy roles are very aware of what you were talking about before. Of if it dries out, how much more fuel they're going to use. I spoke to Brad Wisterson there, the engineer for the leading car of Richard Stanaway and Cam Waters, and said, when, what are you trying to get to? Where's your sort of critical there? And he said, uh, 2012, and he's hoping for two, uh, sorry, two, 112. I'll get it right here in a second <laughs> on how many laps they're doing. It feels like we've been doing 212 laps. We are out here so long. Uh, he's trying to get 112, 113. He's not sure if he's going to get that far based on what they're doing at the moment, but they're very aware of the potential that the weather's going to move through and we may get a bit of a dry run later on. Yeah, well, that really spices things up as if there hasn't already been enough complexity in the race. Thanks for the update, Greg. Keep sniffing around down there because there'll be a lot of people starting to work calcs on how they do this. And it may spring a surprise. Waters has got 22.9 seconds. Cam's actually just done his personal best lap at 2 minute 29.4. So the conditions at the moment, Scapey, are almost a replica of what we had early in the race. So the fastest lap of the race was actually achieved back on lap four by Steve Owen. A correction, I did that earlier in the day as well by Chaz Mostert. And he did a 2 minute 27.5 on lap four. Well, Waters has just done a 29.4, his best on lap 106. So it's starting to get back to what it was like a bit earlier. On board now with Jason Bright, car number 56, and he slides past Richard Musket as well. Richard's a rookie. Jason is not. And crunching numbers here in full flight. <laughs> oh, a lot of be... aggro on. You need to be in the comedy box then, folks, because MS looked at me like a bunny in the headlights because he wasn't sure whether I'd let him into a question that he couldn't answer. <laughs> but I was just going to, you know, fuel calculations. Invite your thoughts on just where we're at weather-wise. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to walk you into a trap. I promise you. <laughs> oh yeah, brother. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. That's good. I could have taken advantage, but let the record show that I didn't. <laughs> so as you said, for pace, Waters and Perkat, 1-2. Uh, then Gisbergen and Slade were 3-4 on the previous lap. So as you would expect, when they put the lead drivers back in cars 97 and 14 there, showing very good speed. In fact, Slade on the next lap is second fastest. So there's going to be quite... In fact, he's now done his fastest lap of the race now with a 29.9 Slade. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of green popping up. That's personal best on our computer timing. So Waters has just done the, his personal best first sector. So is Percat. Slade has done best first and third sectors. Todd Hazelwood has just done his best lap. So people are starting to acclimatise to these little grooves in the road. They're actually semi in the fog at the top of the mountain here at the moment. Back to Tim Slade on screen. Two minutes, 29.9 for him. He's tucked in behind Dean Fiore. He's currently in 13th. He is on the lead lap. Uh, he's a minute and 18 seconds behind. Car looks good, doesn't it? Nice and straight. Very good mid-corner speed. Got real momentum. This would be a great story if they could dig something out after the difficulties they've had. But it was a bright day yesterday for them at Brad Jones Racing when Macaulay Jones was able to get a very good result. A beautiful win for him in the 250k race in the Dunlop Super 2. And he's partnering Nick Perkat, currently in second position. So they're in second and 13th at the moment, and the other car in the field, uh, car number 21, is down in 23rd position with Todd Hazelwood. What would you do? You know, you, you got to lead me out of the bus before. What were you thinking was the right lap? Because the safe number, oh, big moment there for Van Giersberg and under brakes for the final corner. The safe number we're thinking at the moment is 112, but if there was a safety car right now, you'd almost take, take it. I would take it for sure. Yeah, it's sort of, we think that in theory it kind of opened at 106, 107, but you'd like to stretch that as much as you could. That could be a challenge up at the top of the hill at the moment. Visibility, you mean? Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. yeah, 23 seconds is the gap waters to Percat. And then looking back to Luke Yulden, it's 30 seconds from the lead, 40 seconds from the lead, Steve Owen, 45 seconds from the lead, James Golding, 47 seconds from the lead, Jason Bright. So the battles that are potentially to unfold, Musket and Bright aren't too far apart. Dumbrell's just holding station at the moment, which is probably the ideal thing to do, considering the overall global picture of the championship for him, or particularly in reference to his teammate, Jamie Wincup. Only a couple of seconds, though, between Luff and Dumbrell, so Paul might be uh, vulnerable, and here we go. He's just gone down the escape road at turn one. So one of the issues now for a lot of the drivers is there's no use coming in in these conditions and not being able to put a slick tyre on. Yeah, so you're going to wait as long. So you're just yeah. going to have to run. So you've got two issues. You've got, or well, three, really. You've got to make sure that your driver numbers are right, as we see... Dumbrell down the escape road at turn one. Spins it around nicely and comes back out. I can't believe the amount of times they've been off the road this weekend down in those two zones, the triple eight cars. And then when you put that in perspective, you've got the issue of trying to get in when the window opens, which we think conservatively is about three or four laps down the road. And then after that, if you come in early, what tie do you put on? And at the moment, there's no way you can put a slick on. So you've pretty much got to run to the end of that window rather than the start of the window. And the end of the window is more like 118, 119. Yeah, 118 on our yeah. numbers here at the moment. Yes. So that's that's a bit of a challenge. Head scratch. <laughs> it is a big challenge. Always is. It never works out nicely on the slide ruler, does it? It's difficult. Oh. Racing in a bunch of stuff. He's never had a top five, but he has had a couple of top ten finishes. Meantime, it's pretty we've been lively. an eye on this battle between Tim Slade and Shane Van Gisberg. And Gizzy's been very fast, but he's still a long way from the lead. He's still a minute and 26 seconds away, but he's closing in on Tim Slade. Both of these drivers 
with reference to their co-drivers, are in a position to be able to drive through to the finish of the race. It's knife each now between the two of them. This is a battle for 12th and 13th. And they're about nine seconds away from David Russell that we're just making reference to. Gizzy, he bombs this down the inside. He loves that move. He's done it quite a few times over the years, and he's made it stick again. He does love that move. It's his signature move here, isn't it? He did it last year, and the only one to resist was Will Davison, who inevitably won the race. Nick Perkett's just done the fastest lap for car eight. Not the fastest lap of the race, but only a little way away, roughly a second away from the fastest lap early, which was Chaz Mostert. They were just talking to Nick on the radio about the prospect that, you know, you might even find yourself in a dry stint in this next stint of the race. And so they're asking him to stop and think about it. So Paul Scalzo, the engineer for that car, was in conversation with him. He can run through to the end as a driver. Macaulay Jones has cleared his 54 lap requirement. Tim's not giving up without an arm wrestle and a fight here with Shane, who goes back to the crown of the road just to protect. That's the best place to be. There's more grip there than anywhere else. It also means that if Tim wants to have a nibble, he's got to go down the slippery side of the road. So if you weren't with us earlier, folks, the conditions that we're facing right now are very similar to how we started the race. Nick Perkett has now done the fastest first sector of the race. So in terms of condition and overall dampness and tricky conditions and just bumping mirrors there on the way into the braking zone with Slade and Van Gisbergen. This is how we started, and just trying to hold the car narrow on the way out of turn two without running over the crown of the road and getting the negative camber of that surface. There's a lot of elevation change there. Shane continues to run the go-kart line, the wide line through the cutting. And he made some ground that time on Tim Slade through there. And look at this, this is so close to the two mirrors bumping each other. Slade down the outside, Van Gisbergen on the inside, and then a big moment. Oh, that was where the oversteer came from. That was a little bump from Slade, which produced that. Check this out, how close these two mirrors are. They, yeah, just a little wipe. Very nice, great camera work to grab that. And then Slade moves back to the inside, and a little bump, and then that produces the slide and the catch from Van Gisbergen, a normal car control, flamboyant chain gathered it up, no problem at all. Paul Dumbrell, who's currently eighth, has been struggling for visibility, but this is now a welcome condition for him in terms of being able to see. Rusty? A little step up in tempo at Pro Drive Racing Australia in the mega fuels garage. I've just intercepted a, a message. I reckon they said two laps, Scapey, two laps. Gary Jacobson is here and good to go. Helmet on, ready to jump in. Just heard them saying that within three laps, car nine will be due to run out of fuel. So that's Luke Gilden in third position at the moment as Perkat's just done his best lap at 28.1. Six tenths of a second slower than the best lap of the race that Chaz Moss had achieved on lap four. And uh, Paul Scales, I just said to Nick Perkat, I know you're trying to sell me on the notion of slicks, but he said it's just a lot less wet, but you'd never get on them out there at the moment. One of the reasons for that is there's absolutely no wind at all. So the water just sits up and then drops back down on the road where you initially picked it up, but it's not being picked up and blown away. So Musket's in, so Moffat's going to be the first of the guinea pigs to work out whether this is OK on a slick tyre, because you've got to put a slick on now, haven't you? There's no use putting another wet on. You've got to put a slick on, haven't you? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't. Let's have a look. Boys, they've done a pad change, but no, there's wets on that car. Scaping. Really? I'm watching it go on. Yep, absolutely. They have put another set. Looks like, uh, no, they're brand new. Green wet and I've done a bad change. Gee, I, I reckon looking at the radar and the way that this is evolving, I would have taken the punt at that stage. <laughs> I, um, you might as well. Depends on who you are. Um, Look, he's got to take a risk because he was he was sixth coming in. I, I reckon that we're not at the crossover point. Our estimate for that is about at two minute twenty three or two minute twenty four. I reckon we're about three or four seconds away at least, and. I, I'd rather still bat at this point with 50 laps remaining for a bit of conservatism. Would you? Might be why you've won six of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's three or four seconds away. I agree with the crossover, but I think you're going to live with the pain of going out. Well, Nick Perkat's on your side in this debate, and they're counselling him against that inside the garage at Brad Jones Racing, saying, no, we don't think so, not quite yet. 
but it's not far away. That's the zone. I mean, there's a couple of... Around this place, there are zones that are more difficult than others, and that one there is probably one of the worst. The problem is, with a sling tyre, you know only too well what it's like. It's like a complete grip disconnect when you first go out. They've got no grip at all until they begin to get a little bit of warmth and you get the shine off the surface if they haven't already been roaded. Most of them have been this week. But you pick up even the slightest little bit of moisture and the tyre just sits on that moisture and you can't steer the car, you can't brake the car. And it's very easy to come out of the wheel track, sit on a white line, put the car on a kerb and then bang. Just a, if it was just a little bit of breeze out there instead of completely dead flags outside our commentary box window and there was a little bit more of a groove on the road, I'd jump on Team Scape here, but right at the moment I reckon I'll just leave the grooves in my tyres, thanks. <laughs> Such a captain negative. Look, there's still water plumes behind these things. No, no, I'm with you. I'm, I'm not saying it's not without risk, but... <laughs> you're only four or five laps away and when you're fifth or sixth you might as well take a punt well if i was further down the order and staring at the possibility of looking at the result sheet on monday and seeing myself as neville nobody i'd absolutely have a crack but i reckon that if you're somewhere up at the sharper end the problem is that you could throw away a decent bundle of points this yeah. is a good move down the right hand side and nice and cleanly done cut up at 15. Rick Kelly on Chris Pither. And Dean Fiore's come in also in the other Nissan car number 23 at uh, car 21. Todd Hazelwood's run wide down here. That was all a bit messy down at the chase for the Steve Cool Drive entry. He was in the dirt on the left, wasn't he, before the corner? That was a bit of a strange he, spot. He must have had a wild run oh. in, in the fast part of the chase and then and then ended up on the left side That's of the road. Right. Yeah, it's and it, not... But here we go, we'll see more of it here. Oh, he's had the wobble on the way in. Yeah, oh. there we go. So he's bowled a massive wide here. Oh. And that's way outside off stump. He's on the beach sideways at about 275 clicks and managed to tell the tale. That's two race meetings in a row where he's been off the road at very high speed. A little heart rate going there. As we look now, the race leader's in 16-second gap, Greg Murphy. So Richie Sanaway, as predicted, getting in the car. He is ready to go, as we say, assuming he's going to finish this. There's no way they'll be doing another driver change. No pad stop. There's a brand new set of wets sitting here, boys, so they are sticking with that. They're measuring those pads again at the front. Just in the one more stop, obviously, and they'll uh, make the decision if they change those later on. Stanaway's getting bolted in. They're taking a tear off off the screen, waiting on fuel still. The stop is taking a, a fairly long time as far as the driver change goes. And they get the window net up. Still fuel going in for the six. The 55 is also due in soon. There's still moisture falling, guys, in the lane. It's an annoying amount of moisture that was very similar to the pre-race earlier. The 55 is now in here too. Chaz Molster getting ready to climb aboard for the last couple of stints. Richie couldn't have waited another second to get himself stitched into that car. There was a lot of fiddling there with the belt buckle as he just tried to get himself settled. Car number 55, Chaz Molster stepping in, Steve Owen leaping out. Okay, wheels going on. Yeah, plenty of pads there, Cam. Wheels on, boys. Wheels on. Clear on, Dylan. Clear on, Cam. Okay, halfway. Radio check. Slip the wiper, Cam. Slip the wiper. Clean to go, Chad. Yep, there were wets. green, there were green tyres on car six. Green, green wets, yeah. I think that's probably better, because they'll come in very quickly. A green, a green wet's a better tyre like that when you've actually got a dry line. So I, I think that if you're going to put that on, you go that way. But... Still, this uh, this is so precarious because you could be 10 laps into this stint and be dry enough to put the slick on, and all of a sudden there's a 10 second gain per lap. Now Luke Gilden's our race leader. We pick him up in the Penride entry on the run down the hill. He's got a 20 second margin over James Golding. Jason Bright's in third. Richie Stanaway's gone back out after that pit stop into fourth position. So two Holdens and two Fords, first to fourth at the moment. Confirming, pitting this lap, please confirm, pitting this lap. Removing your suit hose, removing your helmet hose. So busy boy Luke Gilden, uncoupling the cool suit, taking the ventilator off his helmet. We are doing brake pads. And they uh, bring Chaz out to make sure that his feet don't get wet. This is pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> 1-800, deliver your driver fast. And uh, 
getting set now for nine to come in. This puts David Reynolds back in the car to the finish of the race. He's in with a chance. He's been a runner up here in 2012, David Reynolds. This guy that's about to vacate the car has done another outstanding job. He's done yes. a heap of laps here today and he's done a heap of miles over the years. He's done no racing at all in 2017 other than his endurance racing. This is his 18th event. So well done, Luke. Nice effort. 73 laps. Very good job. Nice, slow, composed. Dave Reynolds in the car. He's one of the fortunate guys that when he drags his helmet down, he can actually see the buckle. You can see that he can look down and actually view the buckle. So they've, they've put pads in, so he's got a good pad to the end. Now he's pressuring the pedal, looking, he's looking at the refueler, and away he goes. Did not lose a second. And he's got to drop in behind 56 there. And they're making sure that he's got pedal pressure. So they've come in now with Bright, car number 56, so he's pumping that pedal frantically to make sure that when he gets to the end of Mountain Straight, he doesn't have a drama. And now they're set and ready at Red Bull. They're doing the same with 33 for Tanda. Going to be a bit of an issue. Oh, no, it's not. He's clear of that. Paul Dumbrell in. Jamie Wincup on standby. You watch the eye line for Wincup here. As soon as he gets himself organised, the two driver assists do the shoulder belts really slow. Really, really well done. No rush. And look at the eye line for Jamie. He's looking and he's done it. Very well done. So out goes Wing Cup. Now, all these guys, all the lead drivers now, it's a sprint to the finish. That's Tanda. Moffat's on board, who drove so well earlier. Mostert, who was superb in the first phase of the race, and again, in a slippery stint did a great job they're all on brand new wets it won't be long if it stays like this and Mostert has a big moment that's the replay of the final corner and Moffat actually got by he had to go right to the inside and had a big slide they actually bumped each other he actually lost half lost control it flicked back to the other way and then they made contact this is the in lap for Dumbrell as Perkett's down the inside, and Dumbrell's going to battle to stop here because he's been in the dirty section and the wild slide that he's got going. Got away with it. So this is the outside. So that line's changed. So that as the conditions get better, the more you can go back to your traditional line there. So he drove right round the outside of Garth Tander and got away with it. Well, Garth deliberately slowed up the corner to make for the shallow exit out of two to square it onto the rear and get the drive that he saw other people using to effect earlier in the day, and it didn't work for him. This is a great exchange. Fabian had a wriggle on the way into two. Garth slows it up in the mid corner, squares it and gasses it. Fabian went round the outside, the big slide, and he applied the power and got the job done. Now we're back with car nine, David Reynolds. He's got uh, James Courtney on him and about to have a sneak down the inside. David spots him, gives him a little bit of space. And Richard nice. Stanaway is the leader. He's got eight and a half seconds over Van Gisbergen. Then Nick Perkat, then Tim Slade, then David Reynolds. So Brad Jones Racing have been able to play themselves back into this game. Sorry, Neil, my move of the day has been the Rick Kelly move around the outside of Garth Tander at this spot here, onto the wet line. That was good, wasn't it? It was very good. Well, and it was brave. Oh, dear, big moment for David. He just skated out the other side, hanging onto it, but he's got Courtney pressing now. He's managed to keep that position for the time being, but he's under big pressure. Now, there's already a bit of chat about fuel saving. This is a great exchange between 
Very experienced supercar drivers. David Reynolds in position number five. James Courtney in position number six. Gee, he just got stopped there, Dave. They, they missed the apex by about a metre. And this is the one I was talking about. There were three abreast. Fabian pulled back in behind. Ex-teammates, Tander and Kelly. Kelly around the outside in the factory Nissan. Out into the wet line at the fastest corner in this part of the world is a fantastic move. Very brave. A lot of trust between those two guys. But that's the move of the day for me. Beautiful job, Rick Kelly. So just looking at the strategy here at the moment. So Van Giz and Slade are somewhat out of sync. But if it keeps on getting drier, it might play to their advantage. Misty scenes at the top of the mountain from the Red Brewster Chopper Cam. Can't even spot a car up there at the moment. 8.2 seconds, Stanaway over Van Gisbergen. And I'm just trying to work out where the window closes for Shane, and it's, it's lap 129 for him. We're on lap 117. So they're in a slightly different sequence compared to some of those that they're racing. Meantime, Mark, interesting to your point earlier about pace. Coulthard, who's hit the 10th at the moment, has done the very best sector we've seen all race. 59.5. So that's a big step up in pace there. So the track is continuing to improve. Now Courtney, this time he's done it. He's down the inside, side by side. And David's got no choice but to wait for a moment and then drop in behind. Courtney up one spot into fifth. So being out of sync, the two guys that are out of sync are Tim Slade and Van Gisbergen. Being out of sync with the field, although they've only done five stops, five. being out of sync is actually going to help them in terms of getting onto a slick tyre, but, but making the stops is the issue. That's their problem. Yeah. So Percat uh, is showing seven, but remember one of those is a pit lane drive through penalty because Macca had the seatbelt problem. So they've only, in reality, done six, seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah, so Macca had the seatbelt. So just to be careful when we look at our computer here, with the numbers down the right-hand column. So Courtney is the other guy that's yeah, he's out of sync with that. But five club. Five club, yeah. How's the wheel spin going for Dave? Doesn't look as good this time. And I, I, I don't want to be captain negative either, Neil, but I reckon there's some difference in the in the sets, the, the quality or difference in whether they've roaded, what batch they are. The wets today hasn't just been about pressure. It's been about what tyre batch you're in and when you put them on. All the guys now using much more exit space at turn two, getting back to a more traditional line. They'll be able to get back to the traditional line here too. That Actually, he did. Dave Reynolds went back to the inside at the cutting. Everyone else else has been running around the outside. And they're sliding around everywhere. It's actually a great time to drive race cars when it's like this. It's, the cars move around a lot. One of the legendary times of the 1987 Peter Brock drive when he just made that Commodore slide around the place. One of the best things I've ever seen at Mount Panorama. Slade now down the inside. There's Percat. Now remember, as I said, Slade's out of sync. He's made the move down here. This is a replay. He gets down the inside. Teammate on teammate without contact. Nicely done. So let's just check out some margins now. We've got Richie Stanaway with 5.1 seconds in hand over Shane Van Gisbergen, but out of sequence. Then Tim Slade out of sequence in third. Nick Percat, he's in fourth place at the moment. Then James Courtney. And here is Tim now, out from third. Oh. He straight lined that little S bend. So they're well, going to do a pad change and they're making sure that he understands that he's going to stay off the pedal. Van Gisbergen's just done the fastest lap of the race now. It's a 27. We reckon that's still three or four seconds away from a slick, but it's starting to look like there's lap speed improvement to be had out there. So 
So here comes the pad change. They open the clip. In go the calipers. They squeeze back the pistons, pluck out the worn brake pads. And it takes quite a bit of pressure to be able to squeeze them back. And then they bring out the old pads. In go the new. Big drink for That's Tim, looking warning. pretty hot. Going to confirm a pedal, confirm a pedal. And now he's got to pump the system okay. back up. Just waiting on fuel, just waiting on fuel. Go, 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 go. All good, all good. Tim's got 43 laps to go. And he, he looks pedal, please, fatigued. He's asking for a Gatorade, his face is bright red. This is going to be a long road home. It's just look the, hot, doesn't it? it does look hot, doesn't it? Now, whether there's been a cool suit drama or something, he, must, he mustn't have a drink bottle because they've given him a remote bottle while the stop's on. So that's what's going on. The well, drink. I, I can see the drink bottle hose up behind the radio cable, but for some reason it must be empty or there's some of the drama. They're topping up the dry ice for his cool suit. He's got a cool suit, but he's, he doesn't have a drink by the sound of it, so we'll follow that story. He loosened the belts off there as well. Yeah, I don't know whether he thought he was getting out or... Probably wanted to get out if he felt that poorly. <laughs> exactly. Luke Hilden, another wonderful stint by you in the uh, Erebus Motorsport car. I just wanted to ask you, there was a couple of guys radioing in, questioning whether it was ready for slicks. Just your thoughts on that? Yeah, they've got bigger balls than me if they go to that, that's for sure. I think we're still a few seconds away from that, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's drying out, obviously, the time's just starting to come down, but tell you what, uh, I certainly wouldn't take him just yet. Just how difficult is it out there at the moment, sort of those in-between conditions? Yeah, you're just trying to find the grip. I mean, yeah, trying to trying to battle the main guys as well. They push you offline, you lose tyre temp. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough day when it's wet all day, I can tell you. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Cam Waters back in the garage after another strong stint. The PRA Monster Energy number six has been strong all day. You and Richie are making out to be a very, very good pair so far, mate. Yeah, so far so good. Um, yeah, was the first set when it was um, pretty heavy, I wasn't as comfortable, but then when it started drying out, I was um, yeah really comfy and tried to push on a bit. So, um, yeah, we're in a good spot at the moment. Just got to try and keep it. You know, the rain's uh, been handed to stand away to the finish. Um, I'll probably jump in to finish the race. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure when he'll pit, though. OK, thanks, mate. Thanks, man. I'm at Brad Jones Racing. Let's answer that question if we can. Has, has Tim Slate had some sort of drink bottle issue that looked like it in that stop? Um, yeah, well, we've had so many things going on that we haven't been able to top the dry ice as often as we want. And so, you know, he's um, yeah, he's really struggling in the car. So we've uh, given him, we gave him a drink and uh, we've topped it up with dry ice and we're, hopefully that'll bring his body temperature back down and it'll be OK. OK, quickly, it looks like you've got a set of green wets out the front there for the eight. Have you saved a set if it stays? Good? Yes, we have. We made up a set of um, out, out of tyres that we'd use to run him on in this stint. And, I think it's going to dry though. The, the real trick is going to be when you go under slicks because the people on the alternate strategy might have the ability to take their fuel, go under slicks where you know Nick will have to do an extra stop and so will Waters. Let you get back to watching this here. No, what's that? Does he run off here? Yeah. Hey, I don't know. Yeah, he yep. See ya. Yes, he has. Okay, thank you. Okay, he's one run wide down there at the chase. Thanks for following that up for us, Greg. Uh, car number 88 is on screen. Going on there. Doesn't sound good. Uh, I wondered whether or not there was just weird audio or is there actually a problem? So, if you weren't with us earlier, so we just got to get this in perspective. Scott McLaughlin, who was fantastic yesterday, has had an engine drama with Alex Premier in the car and has stopped. So he's out of the race as the series leader at the moment. So this could neutralise what's happened in that battle for the championship. Came in with an 84 point margin, McLaughlin, but that definitely sounds off song. They've cleared the garage at Red Bull. And for Courtney and for Van Gisberg and their fuel window, the current load that they've got on, for James it closes at 127, we're on lap 120, and for SVG it closes at 129. They're hanging on as long as they can to get potentially onto a, a dry tyre. Uh, but both Gizzy and James get onto a dry tyre, but there's still a stop short. That's right. So it's a seven stop minimum race. And those they're racing, like for example, Stanaway, the leader, he's done his sixth stop already. So that gives them a little bit of time in hand. It's a bit of contact there for Mostert and Moffat. He gave him a little rub. And it's dropped the cylinder. We're hearing over the radio that Wink Up 
has dropped the cylinder, Murph. Yeah, Paul Dumbrell just uh, mouthed engine to me. That it's on its way in as well. They've got a space uh, prepared for it in the garage. The 88 has definitely got an engine problem, so not a good day for Red Bull there. It's all going on on the pit straight here at the moment between car 55 and 34, between Mostert and Moffat. They're absolutely... Oh, he's got a spin. No, he go oh, Knocking each other save. sideways at the moment, and Moffat got away with it just. He sat it up on the painted ripple strip and it slid. It looked for all money like he was about to turn that around. And they were at it in the final corner and down pit straight. So that was a spooky moment that he only just barely got away with. Here's the stricken 88. Bigger one than what we've just seen, but just a shout out to Tim, former British Formula Ford and Formula 3 champion. He tested 36 Grand Prix races with Brabham, Williams, Surtees and Lotus. Drove Ferrari and the works team in the sports cars. The vastly experienced. So opportunity now for people to react to this. They're in the garage working on car number 88. Meantime, car number nine gets a little splash. You've got to put slicks on. You've got to put slicks on now. Well, people are talking about it. Does anybody whack them on? Mark Scaife says absolutely. Others are not blinking at the moment. They're standing by. What are they putting on here for Coulthard? It's wet going back on, Rihanna. Yeah, David Reynolds just came into pit lane. Fuel only, no tyres at all for Dave Reynolds. Yeah, guys, and uh, just looking in and for the 88, Kenny Mack is going to work on the uh, left-hand bank rocker cover, so he's pulling the rocker cover off. That would suggest, boys, obviously, they've got a rocker issue inside the engine there, so uh, his day will be done, obviously. There's Kenny McNamara, so he's just working on the rocker gear on the overhead gear, so who's got the slicks laid up here? So uh, that's Wilson Security, Gary Rogers Motorsport, I presume, for either Moffat or Tander. There's a rock right smack bang in the middle of the road there. Oh, it's gone. Right underneath Garth Tander's car. Went right down the centre of that loaded front tyre. They'll be watching tyre pressures very carefully on that. As a result, that would have been a big impact on the tyre. Now, they're laying up a wet tyre at Red Bull for car number 97 because 88 is in the garage. And they're also going to change the blocker. See, in his right hand, they're changing something in the front of the car as well. Here's the replay of that great move by Van Gisbergen to go to the lead. He gets down the inside of Richie Stanaway. And that was a nice job. And he wrestled it out the other side beautifully. Here's the view from Richie's car. Watch out for the Holden down the inside. Gave him plenty of space. Shane did it nicely. Swipes across the front. Great respect between the drivers and now Van Gisbergen's in. Let's check it out. I'm actually at Brad Jones Racing, Crompo, and they're going to roll the dice here by the looks of it. Slicks on standby for the eight, and it seems like a set for the 14 as well. That's a big call. We're not quite there in lap speed compared to what the theory suggests, but maybe this is the brave gamble that wins you the race or parks you in the wall. And Van Gisbergen, who you would think would be the most flamboyant of the field, has put wets back on again. So that's the conservative bet. Conversely, have a look down the back. And changing blanking. Conversely, Percat has put the slick on. Sorry, Rihanna. No, that's OK, Scapey. There's a mixed bag at Nissan Motorsport. I can see the Car 20 Todd Kelly. They've got wets laid out. But for Car 23 and 78, they've both got slicks laid out. Yeah, well... This is the deep debate, isn't it? The, the punt you take at this point of the race is win or lose material. This is a big call for everybody either way. If you put the wet tyre on and it dries up, you go slow. If you put the slick on, and remember, you cannot easy be to make a mistake. Fueled to home from here. So we're on lap 123. So it's going to have to be another stop to get you to the critical lap. So they'll have to cycle through the pit lane one more time. And for some, it might be a chance to get off the wet and get to the slick. For others, it might be to undo the slick and get to the, up the wet. So the opposite. So this is Percat, and he went to the slick tyre in car number eight. Now, this is really high risk right at this point, but he gets to do it behind the safety car. So he doesn't have to go berserk. So that's why he's working the tyres. So this is very important. So he's going to do everything he can to be working the brake pedal, having heat radiate out through the disc, into the rim, into the carcass of the tyre. The rock's been cleared. 
making sure that he's working the steering wheel, picking up the throttle pedal, lighting up those rears, doing everything he can to try and coax those tyres to get up from the ambient temperature. So here we are again on board with Nick Perkett. Hey guys, I'm, I'm not really sure, uh, and I haven't been able to find out from Dean Canto why the five just came in as well. They've come in, they changed tyres, put another set of wets on, and uh, fueled that car. But as you just referenced before, Crompo, they can't get to the finish. But I thought their strategy was very similar to their teammates, so I'm not quite up to speed with what's happening there. That was an unusual stop from, from my recollection. Murph, the big thing but for me is, can you check car six? Because they didn't come in. No. That's right, As a didn't. consequence of that, that's put Van Gisbergen back only three spots from Stanaway in terms of actual track position. Yeah. But he's only he's got less fuel to put in now. In fact, he's back on the that's same why strategy. That's they've done the five. Well, that's why they've done the five. The escape you've picked with less it on. fuel. Yeah. So, that, to me, that's given Van Gisbergen a free kick, hasn't it? To a degree, I reckon it has. But they, I, talking to Nathaniel Osborne before, that's what they they were worried about the track drying and also the fact that uh, safety car playing into Van Gisbergen's Bergen's hands just like this. They were very aware of the 97 and where that was at the time. But what this will be about also is the, the gamble on tyres. They're all queued up, ready for a restart here. But uh, so leaving Stanaway out, warm, wet, used tyres. Is that an advantage? Nick Perkett's on cold, slick tyres. Is that an advantage? Shane Van Gisbergen, they put him out on fresh, wet tyres. How does that play? So you've got all sorts of people here in big teams, vastly experienced operators, all placing bets on different colours and numbers here to see whether they can come up trumps in the 2017 edition of the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. That's what makes it intriguing. We've got 39 laps remaining. We've been racing for five and a half hours and we are a long way from done. Stanaway is the leader. Mostert is in P2. Those on slicks out there, they'll have their hands full. And one of them is in car eight. And when he's out there and held high and wide, off that ideal racing line, he will be in a massive amount of grip trouble. Stanaway's got 1.7 seconds. And car triple eight, Craig Lowndes at the helm is out of sequence there at the moment. They're three wide into turn two. Now, there's a period when you first go out on a slick tire on a wet track where you get that sinking feeling. But if it does continue to improve and the groove starts to arrive, it's like you grow 10 feet tall and the grip connects and away you go. But right at the moment for Nick Perkat, he is drifting straight to the bottom of the pond. Yeah, so keep calm. My keep strategy calm, mate. Keep calm. looks a bit ordinary at the moment. It'll want to get better in terms of no more rain and continuing to dry. Very treacherous for Nick Perkett. I thought that the Gary Rogers cars were going to come in. They didn't come in. Remembering you've got a compulsory seven stops. Everybody now in the lead group has done six stops. And this corrected range that we think that they've got for fuel means that you need to get to about lap 134 or 135 to fuel up to get home. We're watching the progress of Nick Perkett. He's one of three cars that we've identified on slick Dunlop tyres. 23 Caruso, 78 Simona, and 8 Nick Perkett. Look how hard he's working to keep control of the whole Commodore at the moment. He's got one down the inside, another up the outside. He's got no grip at all at the moment, but it might come back to him. He knows it. He's experienced. He won this race on debut with Garth Tander. So you just got to use your brain for a little while here. Be conservative. Make sure you don't go off the road and the tyre temp will come to you. Stay on those tram tracks. Make sure you stay in the dark patch. Oh. Whoa! That was close. And he's just about off the road, but he stayed there. This will get better. Just got to be patient with it. That's Todd Kelly rounding him up. And that's the problem with the slick early on. So through they go. And we've seen a new fastest lap achieved by Chaz Mostert on that lap. Three wide on the run to one. David Reynolds down the inside. Jason Bright in the middle and up on the outside. Nick Perkat. 
crazy. And personal best for Stanaway, personal best for Moffat. Car nine. Car nine. Car 19, sorry, I just heard a, a, a message in the background, a pit lane penalty for car 19, a safety car procedure breach. And that is for Will Davison at the helm of that car at the moment. So the conditions are getting better. It's a 26-7 for Stanaway, a 26-1 for Moffat, a 29-8 for Tanner. Remember, they're only just getting restarted, so they're fumbling traffic. But the message coming through on the timing computer at the moment is there's more speed in the racetrack that might play to Nick Perkett but he needs it he's down in 13th at the moment he's given away a massive amount of track position taking the gamble we're riding now with Chas Mostert he's staring at the back of the race leader's car a stable mate and what about James Moffat what a weekend for him Drove the wheels off it to get it into the top 10 shootout, only to end up literally driving the wheels off it when he hit the wall at the S's. Because he triggered the red flag, he gets removed from Quali. They go back to his second fastest lap. They put him back to 22nd all day, together with Richard Musk, and he's been climbing through the field. James is experienced. He's been a runner-up at this race. His co-driver has never driven a supercar at this race before. He's currently in third position. Just struggling to stop there for both parties. Mostert has driven impeccably today. It was great at the start. And there's a drive-through penalty. And can he get it stopped on his teammate? Yes, he does. Stanaway gives him clearance. And that allows him down the inside. So Mostert goes to the lead of the race. On lap 126 of 161. Chas Mostert leads. Richie Sanaway. James Moffat running behind. There's your lead three cars. So a 25-6 is the new best lap of the race. And that guy right there has just achieved it. So that's again now very close to the crossover. And that's going to light things up. Now keep an eye in the background also because Van Gisbergen's six seconds from the lead of this race and he's on a fresh set of wet tyres here. Winterbottom is also flying. He's down in 14th, but his sector three time was very good. So the track's beginning to light up. And that'll play somewhat to Nick Perkat. He's down in 13th now. The last lap for him was a 35. So he's almost, he's not far from about 9 or 10 seconds slower than those on a wet tyre. That's how much of a battle it is. But there'll begin to be a return. And remember, they've got to stop for fuel and fuel to the end. And that'll be a test of where they're at with economy. When can they take that stop? And what does it do for track position? And is there an undercut benefit? And it'll be the other way. If he's the guy on a slick, when everyone else is on a wet and it dries out, there'll be 10 seconds gain. So this is now a move by Moffat down the inside. He's driven very well today, James Moffat. Fantastic job. And he makes the move. He moved it over now into the water, trying to cool that tire off. Moffat's on the fastest lap of the race so far. He did it on the previous lap. But he's got purple sectors in sector one and two also. Now, one of the things you can also see from the shots that we're looking at at the moment, and James Courtney's under investigation for the safety car restart procedure, is they're beginning to hunt for some water here and there as well to cool out these tyres. So a new fastest lap for Chas Mostert. They dispatched car 88 there before as well, so that could be key points. And a reminder that with Wind Cup back in the race and may be able to be classified to get some points, could have a big bearing on the fact that McLaughlin went out of this race with some kind of an engine problem earlier today. It started to run rough very early. Here's the replay of what happened. Down the inside goes David Reynolds. Nice move on Garth Tander.
So 23-9 the last lap for Mostert. Now we're beginning in theory to be getting to the slick tyre phase of the race. That's what we predicted at the top of the day in the Hino Hub. We said when you get to about a 23, that's your crossover point where you can climb off a wet to a dry, or of course it can also go the other way. So now we'll keep an eye on the lap speed for Nick Perkat, who's just done his own personal best in the third sector. So those tyres are beginning to switch on. This is James Moffat. He's gone up into position number two. He's only two and a half seconds from the lead of the race. And he's only just barely in front of Richie Stanaway at the moment. So we're playing the grand final game. A big part of the grand final game takes in the championship. The championship leader went out of the race with Alex Premer on board with engine drama. So with an 84 point gap coming into today, Scott McLaughlin is a DNF, but did not finish. Now, Winkup, who was parked in the garage, as we just saw, similar engine gremlins, but he's back out there, and he's now back in the garage again. Now, Mostert is further improving on his speed out there on this lap. He's done the race best time in the first sector. He's just cleared the elbow in the second sector, and he's done the race best sector split there. So he's on target to drop that number to the low 23s. Might even be better than that into the 22s. We're focused from his perspective, so it sneaks it to the left. Actually, it jumped sideways on him and just moved him to the right. It's really just nothing but a hiccup. Is a possibility out there. Huh? It's pretty rugged, isn't it? Yeah. The drivers were just talking, and Will Davison was on the radio talking about how misty it is at the top still and that it's very slippery off the line. So a 23-2 is the fastest lap. 4.6 seconds is the gap mostered over Moffat. Stanaway in third. Reynolds is looking quick here at the moment. He's done the first and second split better than any other driver at the moment on a 58-3. Perkett's so, just done his fastest last sector on the previous lap. So those tyres are just starting to come on. A little bit of a lighter story coming out of Shell V Power racing after a tough day for our pulse hitter. Scotty McLaughlin sent a shout out to fans at the top of the mountain. He says, my mate Alex Prema is stuck up there. If you can see him, can someone offer him a beer? And he hasn't turned back up in the garage. <laughs> so we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, incidentally, uh, we won't get ahead of ourselves. If Cam Waters can get this thing on the podium, boys, they will be celebrating in Mildura. His cousin, Josh Waters, wrapped up the Australian Superbike Championship for today, uh, today for Suzuki at Phillip Island. It's a big day for the Waters family. We'll see what happens. There's still 33 laps remaining. Watching Scotty Pye, car 02 here at the moment. He's in a little battle with car number 14, Tim Slade. Rick Kelly's in there as well. That's a new best lap. Lost at one uh, correction, two minutes, 22.4. So now there is well and truly a dry slot out there in a couple of places. So I want to carefully keep an eye on the lap speed for Percat. He's in the third sector of the racetrack at the moment. He's just about to come down to the last corner. I'm going to go to Murph very shortly, but I'll just wait for him to get through the left-hander and cross the control line because I want to see what the lap speed is for the slick tyre. Meantime, Gary Jacobson screaming speak louder on the radio, so he's having trouble communicating at the moment. So the lap speed for Percat that lap, to answer my own question, was a 227.5, so it's still five seconds slower than the wets. And boys, just wanted to confirm on what we talked about before when the five came into the lane during that last safety car. They decided to split the odds there at Pro Drive and put uh, Mark Winterbottom on the same strategy as the 97 of Shane Van Gisbergen, but he lost a lot of track position. And looking at his times, looking at his position, he has been struggling to actually make any of that up. So the five back a little bit, but then he will not have to put as much fuel in, obviously, later on in that last stop to get to the finish. I'm confused why they brought Coulthard in then when you're not terribly far from the critical window to get the car fueled to home. So they're going to have to bring that car back in. I'm with you. So he's down in 15th at the moment, and he'll be starting to exploit the grip. Here's Van Gisbergen down the inside of Stanaway, turn 18 at Forest Elbow. Meantime, I understand that 23 is quick at the moment. Also, Michael Caruso. Shane didn't get it done there that time. They put a new wet tyre on that car. So in theory, Van Gisbergen should have a bit more grip than Stanaway. He's searching for a little bit of cooling water out there at the moment. Shane Van Gisbergen went off the racing line. But he's clearly got some speed in hand over car six at the moment. So we're not terribly far away from getting to the point in the race 
where you fuel up to get home, and then it's going to be on because it's any man's guess rubber-wise at the moment. Is there any more weather left in store? Who's got the pace? Who hasn't? Shane lost a lot of ground up the pit straight that time, didn't he? New quickest lap, lost at 221.9. He's still on a wet tyre. Mostert, Moffat, Stanaway. Ford first, Holden second, Ford in third, then Van Gisbergen. He's charging. Now, a pit lane penalty for car number 22 for James Courtney for a safety car restart procedure mistake. And that takes James Courtney out of eighth, out of the top ten. He won't recover from that at this phase of the race. Now, the interesting scenario is that we're talking about the pace of where Percat kicks in, and he's just done his fastest, in fact, the fastest last sector of the race. But Caruso's been doing 23s when Percat was doing 25s and 26s. So, right now, Caruso is charging on a slick tyre. But Caruso's been much faster than Percat on a slick tyre. And on that lap, he's at a 22.5. So he's going almost as fast as the leaders now. So this is right on the crossover. And the awkward part about it for these guys is that unless there's a safety car, that'll be a real battle to get that car number five home from here. They're on lap 130, and we've still got 32 laps to go, and we've not seen a, not seen a window anything like that. This is a vigorous battle now. This is really wild. So Van Gisbergen continues to search high and low to cool out those tyres. They put fresh wets on his car. He's battling his countryman, Richie Stanaway, in the Monster Energy Ford Falcon. Just ahead, car number six at the moment. They didn't stop him. They left him out. He's got warm, worn wets on that car. We're watching very closely Nick Perkat, who's now down around the 223s. So the slicks are switching on for Perkat. And then he'll have hot slicks, hotter than anybody else. And look how wide Stanaway's gone. That's a free kick there for Van Gisbergen. Up he goes into third spot. Tander's done a 21. He's still on wet. So the highest placed car on a slick at the moment is Percat in 12th as Reynolds comes in. That's an early blink to a slick tyre. But Caruso was way faster on slick tyre than Percat. So he's doing 22s when the other guys are doing late 23s. Go, 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 go. So this will be interesting to see what happens as this unfolds. Because Percat, as you said, is 12. 23.85. The fastest lap of the race, Garth Tander. And now, Percat, fastest lap of the race, 20.6. So it took a while, didn't it, for those tyres to be able to deliver. He came in on lap 122. It's now lap 131. That's a long time to be able to get them to work. But now they are. So a 20.6. The people that are pitting now are not fueled to the end. They are going to have to come in, but they're hoping that the gain they make in the slick propels them up the road and negates the time loss of the pit stop. That's a big gamble. But again, if we say 137 is a critical lap, You've just got to bite the bullet and get yourself there on the tyres you're on now, don't you? I would. Yeah. Touring hang, the pit lane hang comes out. with a very, very big invoice. Just hang out there. It's getting exciting at Mount Panorama. We've got 31 laps remaining. We've been racing for five hours and 51 minutes. Chaz Mostert, a former winner, is the leader. 6.6 seconds over James Moffat. Shane Van Gisbergen and Richie Stanaway, they've been battling. We've got Garth Tander in this one, Gary Jacobson, Scott Pine, Tim Slade, James Courtney's about to serve a penalty, and Nick Percat is flying, and he's currently in 10th position on a slick tyre that's now been warmed up. It took him seven or eight laps to get it to work. Tander up the inside, he's on a wet, and he now moves into fourth position. Stanaway's tyres are hurting now on car number six, and he's got a pit, he is pitting now. Yep. That's a smart thing. You've got to do that. You've got to limit your risk. The problem is, you can't get home from here if it's dry. But he's losing so much time. 
he's needed to react. So fastest lap of the race, Michael Caruso on the slick tyre. Percat now with best sectors to eclipse that time. So the fastest man at the moment out there, Nick Percat on a slick tyre, intense position. There's the moment for Stanaway. Wow, that was right out sideways as Van Gisbergen goes by. He was losing a lot of time They are in the lane. As you said, Shane, they're not the critical lap yet. They fought in the five before pro drive as well. Uh, Brendan Hogan said their strategy was out the window because he got held up in the last safety car behind another car that was on slicks going slowly. So he decided to come in for the five with Winterbottom, put the slicks on and try and make up some time. But Waters has got a job to do. He's on slicks. He's got to get those te the temperature in these tyres and get some gain before he has to come in again and put Phil to the finish. Let me read a number out. The new fast the slap of the race has been achieved by Fabian Coulthard a two minute 18.4 and only a couple of tenths ago Nick Perkat also did a stunning number look at it a 218.5 the slicks have switched on the track has come to them they are now the superior tire by a massive margin watch these guys slice through the field with extreme speed